segment. Give your wife your kids. <laughs> it's kind of camera. <laughs> Nobody's there yet. <laughs> uh, true that. But it, they can watch it backwards. <laughs> oh, okay, it just went live. <laughs> Just stop playing. We've got good. Oh my goodness, things are freezing up here. Probably we need to, need to do a reboot or something. Uh, let me quit Safari. That. All right. Uh, let's see. They reload Safari. Hold on a second. Let's see if it'll play. I'm asking ah. you to make a donation. Get that ad every single time. All right, where are we? Where are you all? Oh, hey, Sam. I think you're first again. <laughs> Any relation to John Stamos? How often do you get that question? <laughs> That's two questions. <laughs> hey, Bruce, I think I answered that uh, question for um, da uh, Dashmir, Dashir, 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 or Dashmir, or whatever the name was, whatever the handle was. Um, I think I think it's just the grounding on the guitar. A, a cable unplugged into an amp is always going to make that noise. If we're talking about the hum, um, and then. Uh, if you once you plug it in, the hum should go away. But when he touched it, the hum went away, which tells me, okay, it's the the grounding wire from the pickups to the um, uh, the whammy bar to the tremolo bar is disconnected somewhere, either at the end of the at the. Um, so it's just a, a, a simple soldering job. We'll fix it. Heck, I fixed it with some electrical tape when I didn't have a solder on me. Uh, but. Um, yeah, yeah, just click through the ad. I know. Hold on a second. I, I had to mute. I was... Oh, man. You're still playing the ad. Okay, here we go. One, two, three, four. There we go. So I'm just going to jam a little bit on these, th these three new scales for you. Sounds very Bucket Owens to me, like about just 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 sticking with that one scale. And again, it's very difficult because when I'm soloing, I want to use every tool I have, not just one tool. And so it's but it's a it's a very 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 fun scale to use on it. And it opens up a whole bunch of new possibilities. You know, we get that, we get that, because it's got the flat three in it. We're going to talk about what's the scale, but it's got the flat three and the three in it. So you can do the whole, the, this thing. Um, you can do this. Uh, see, 
that's that's going from the flat three to the three. Okay, so you're kind of going sad, sad, happy, sad, happy, sad, happy. It <laughs> really fast. It's hard. It's hard to just only do, do the, that scale. Okay, I'm going to turn off this jam track. Um, let me give you the link for the jam track always. In fact, I may pin it for a little while, which makes a lot of sense. Um, and let's see if we see it. Now, you did see, I'm not going to pin it at first, okay? Let me know if you see this, because we were having problems with links the other day on Friday. We weren't able to post links. So let me know if you see that link. If you see it, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin it so we have it at the top. Um, <laughs> don't buy another amp dash mirror. It's, I think it's just the guitar. I, I think it's the, I think it's the grounding wire from the electronics on a strat. There's a grounding wire from the electronics to the, um, tremolo bot, bot uh, tremolo arm. We <laughs> just bought a new amp though. Right? So, you know, the tremolo mechanism that's behind that plate right there, uh, there's usually a wire or there should be always a wire going to that from, uh, uh, and usually it goes through the body, comes through a little hole, and then they usually solder it to the plate that's mounted to the wood. And what that does is it grounds your guitar. Um, and because the, the giveaway was, when I was watching your videos, the giveaway was when you touch the, the cord was plugged in, you touch the cord, it the, uh, the buzz went away. So um, one, if the buzz goes away, then so, see, when you hold a cord unplugged, it should make that sound. That's the sound of an open circuit, basically, um, or an open uh, line. Did you guys, could you see that? Can you see that? Uh, I posted a link, a YouTube link. Can you see it? <laughs> and, the, and the problem went away? Did the problem go away with the with the uh, with the new guitar? I read some of that, but it was a pretty long thread. I have to admit. Hold on, and I just closed it because I don't want it to be beeping while we're. Well, I'm, oh, not that. Let's see, where is it? Discogs, not Discogs. Discord. <laughs> um. Yeah. So, but oh, boom, boom. Yeah, it's it's just it's to me a hundred percent sounds like. Um, oh, funny. Is this all this after what I just posted? Oh, no, no. Sorry, I'm on the wrong tech chat. Yeah. Well, it's okay, dude. <laughs> Dashy dash mirror. Dash mirror. Uh, you, you're, you got new guitars and new amps? Hey, it's a win-win. Honey, I had to buy them. <laughs> you know what my greatest fear is, right? Oh, the noise. What? Uh, okay, that's weird. Then, yeah. Now that's that's weird. And we're talking about the hum, not the crackling, right? Yeah. Yeah, and the humming noise when the guitar, the amp, and cable are connected without a guitar is natural. If I if I took my a cable plugged into my Marshall and turned up the Marshall, it'd be it'd be humming. Uh, because you're not completing the circuit. So once you plug a guitar in, uh, that should complete the circuit. Um, now, it, I, I don't know if you've seen, let me see if I can find it. I'll put it in the Discord. Uh, I'm pretty sure, did I? Um, let's see, where is that picture? Here. All right, photos, pictures. There's a picture of me working with Justin Bieber. Uh, this was, in fact, the day that we wrote uh, Yellow Raincoat together. And um, we were recording, so we were recording my Dove, my Gibson Dove, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So check this out. I'm going to put this in the Discord here. Uh, let's see. Uh, what am I going to put this under? Uh, general Chit Chat, I guess. I don't know.
and um, Josh wanted to to um, here we go. Josh wanted to record um, my acoustic with a mic, maybe a couple mics. I think I had a couple mics on there, and then he also wanted to take the the DI or the not the DI but the the pickup. And I really hadn't used that guitar's pickup in a long time, and um, so. Justin's sitting there too, <laughs> and we're jamming. And um, J uh, Josh, so he, but when I hooked it up, he was like, "Hey, there's a buzz," and I'm like, "I listen to my ears," and I go, "Oh yeah, there is a buzz." He goes, "Yeah, I think it's your guitar," and I'm like, "Oh," and I put my hand on the cable, and the buzz went away. Very very similar situation, right? But obviously, I can't play and keep my hand on the cable. <laughs> so what I did was I took off my shoe. And I put my foot on the other end of the cable and at the, where it was plugged into the, the uh, direct box and it went away. And so the whole session I had to put my foot and you can see my shoe. I got my, if somebody, somebody pointed it out, like, why are you, why do you take one shoe off? You know, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> that was to solve a problem. So, and that's, that's old Justin Bieber right there. Let's see, that was 2014. So that was six years ago. That was Six years ago, next week, uh, we wrote this song. This was two days after Christmas. And that room in that picture, if you're looking at the photo, I wish I could put it here. Um, that room in the photo uh, is where they, that's Henson Studios, which was the old A&M Studios, which before that was the Charlie Chaplin Studios. Um, but A&M was bought by Herb Alpert back in the day, and then he sold it to Jim Henson uh, Corporation. And... Um, but that's where they filmed We Are the World, if you remember that. That's pretty where pretty much where we're sitting is where they put that stage, I think, for We Are the World. Um, let me see. Albums. So I, I've got the picture here I can hold up. I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not. If you're not on Discord. Okay, so <laughs> trying to get no glare on this is hard. There we go. Uh, so if you can see... That white thing at the base of my leg, that's my sock. <laughs> and there's Justin there. You see, he's left-handed. So we look like a, not like a mirror, but, you know. So we we wrote, uh, yellow, he wrote Yellow Raincoat right after that. I mean, I already had that hook. And um, that's uh, this one here, which yeah, most of you don't know because you're not just a Bieber fans. I know that. So, um, but it was... Um, <laughs> Join us live every time because, um, oh, look, breakfast. <laughs> the, the cook brought breakfast. Wow, lots of sausage and eggs and potatoes. and Sorry, I have, I'm starving. Oh, I need hot sauce. I'll be really good. Mmm, so good. Oh, my gosh. This is so good. Twice cooked potatoes. Okay. <laughs> Um, cause dash the, 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 um, dash the, the, um, um, the lessons aren't in any particular order. <laughs> in fact, they're really stream, the, the actual lessons themselves are stream of consciousness. And so are the lesson planning. So there is no, um, wait, go ahead. Um, ask me any question. Um, but, uh, there is no real, like, lesson plan uh you know when i was doing this i, I if i'd known i was going to be on lesson 152 is that where we're at i think i probably would have cried and would never have start this started this <laughs> um but uh but once we got started it was fine um but if i'd made a plan out i probably would have done these lessons earlier so you might think of these as being more beginner lessons than some of the other lessons we had um so you, you, you know, and, and you can take that sheet that uh, that uh, Bruce created on the Discord and um, you can prioritize and, use, and do the videos in order. But if you're going in order, that, it's, that's actually quite the, the slice of 2020 right there. You know, I mean, we don't talk about 
current events very much here. But um, so, okay, so uh, Dash, you had a question. Uh, let's see. Um, one question for you, Tom. When I'm trying to play lead or copy a top line track of my guitar, how do I get better at playing the notes across the strings without playing wrong notes? Hmm. Start slow. Uh, don't try to play at the speed uh, that you're that the person you're copying. If you've got the tab for a solo, or if you're tabbing it out yourself, I recommend tabbing it out yourself. Heck, it's a lot easier today than it was when I was a kid. I mean, it's a lot easier. I mean, you can you can put things into slow down, uh, which I almost don't recommend, but you can slow things down to to figure them out. Boy, I wish I had that when I was trying to figure out some of the Al Miola and the George Benson stuff. No, no, I'm sitting there with a record player, and when it got to the next note that I didn't know, I got the guitar in my hand and the record needle, and I lift the needle up, and I'm like, try to find that note, and I'm like, dang it, I didn't, so I have to listen. And you put the needle down, and you're like 30 seconds away from the point where, you know, whereas on, a, on, a, on your phone or on a, you know, computer, you can go back one second or two seconds or three seconds, so it's real easy just to go back and get something now that you uh, were trying to tab out or figure out before when, when you know, when, you, when it was records. A totally different game uh, that I'm not. I, I wish wasn't the case. But figuring out something yourself, tabbing, I think that's much bigger and much more important um, than reading a tab. However, the problem with the guitar is that you might very well tab it out the wrong part of the neck. I did that a thousand times. I thought, oh, this is how they played it, and then I saw him play it, and I went, oh, he plays it down here, and I played it up here, or I played it up here, and he played it down there, um, all that stuff. So. Um, Oh, yeah, it's still probably, you know, just about memorizing, memorizing the scale so you don't have to look at it. That's the first step. Um, kind of hard to, kind of hard to diagnose without hearing you play or hearing the, the example. Yeah, it's, it's. It takes a while. Uh, the, so you're talking about the Dua Lipa song. Um, so you're talking about a rhythm part, not a lead part necessarily. All right, you got Jay Baker. You got your Epiphone Casino. Yeah, I should get mine out. Um, it's hanging in Emma's room right now. So, but yeah, Dash, we can talk more about that later too. Um, but you, you've already clearly stated showed that you can. Um, videotape uh your amp noise so maybe video send <laughs> post a videotape of you playing what you're talking about yes oh man rewinding cassette that was a little bit easier than um man these eggs are great <laughs> uh that was a little bit easier than putting a needle down on a record mm. i'm sorry if you're hungry Right now, this is an ask, ask me anything. But Dash is a little hard to. Oh, Holly's speaking Dutch now. All right, I'm confused here. Well, B Kitty. Finally, I get time to watch live, and I'm you just watch me eat. I know, right? Can you believe I've done this all for you? Where's John? John, why? Is he on? Hey, Angelina. Trinidad. Wow, that's really, really cool. My, my parents been bit, went to Trinidad when I was a kid. Um, I remember because they sent me a postcard. They went to like all the islands in the Caribbean. He, my dad loved the Caribbean. And they took us once as kids. Um, we went to, um, it's so rude. You know, there are, there are YouTube channels where um, it's just, a, it's just a, a pretty girl eating live and she'll get like millions of views. It's like, really? Um, I'm not a pretty girl eating. Oh, man. 
It tastes so good. I think potatoes have to be a regular feature. Um. Bah, 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 bah. Oh, good. I'm glad. I'm glad, Dennis. You're both feeling feeling better. Um. <laughs> he said, "Oh, you 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 must use a translator." Not quite right. I wonder what she really said. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, guys. We're, I'm gonna get to playing here in a second. Okay. I remember you lived in Antwerp. I think that's pretty cool. I would have loved to have lived in Europe. I didn't go to Europe until I was in my 40s. I don't know. Anyway, you can see that picture on Discord of me and the Biebs uh, working on Yellow Raincoat. That was not the first song we wrote together. That was the second song we wrote together. We've written many songs together since then. But, uh, but just for a release. All right, so... Um, if you remember the previous lesson, we did the pentatonic scales, okay? So look at these. Um, the, the pentatonic scale uh, starts with a whole step. It's a, the root of the chord, you know, the root of the note, the root note. In the case of playing over G, we say G. And then you go up a whole step, A and B. So it starts out like a major scale. Do, re, mi. And then it skips fa. Do, re, mi, so, do, mi, da. Okay? And that's, so it's it's uh, two whole steps and a minor third and a whole step. Don't worry about that. And a minor third, there will not be a quiz on any of that. Okay, so take a celebratory sip. That's one of our drinking game rules. Uh, I don't know if Angelina is still with us, but hopefully she is. We have a drinking game, so make sure you have libations here. This is uh, this coffee is brought to you uh, by a generous grant from John Y. So, <laughs> but he's not here today. He sent me a Starbucks card. via the internet, the, the worldwide internets. Um, and so we had those, that scale. Okay. So the, the, um, if we look at those notes in the G major pentatonic, it's the root, the second, the third, the fifth, and the sixth. Okay. That's a total of five notes. One, two, three, five, and six. So don't be confused when I go one, two, three, and then I go five. This is not Orwell. This is not 1984. And then six. Okay. Those are the five chords we have in a major pentatonic, or the five notes we have in a major pentatonic. Same thing with the C major pentatonic. That's a C is the root. D is the second. E is the third, right? That's the happy. The... Okay. Um, G is the fifth and A is the sixth. Those are the five notes. It's good to finish it out and go to the root on top, too. Okay. And then the D major pentatonic is the root, second, third, fifth, and sixth. Same. They're all the same. They all have the same uh, analysis. They're all one, two, three, five, six. Okay. So that's been established. I really didn't talk about that too much last week. All right. We didn't talk too much about that. Okay, so we go to the blues, major blues, I call them major blues scales. And what we're doing is we're adding a flat three. You can think of it as a sharp two, but it's better to think of it as a flat three because that's, you, you, you want to think of it as undercutting the three because you, you, you can go both ways, right? That's kind of what, you know, that's, that's that scale right there. Um, but you can also go, you can uppercut instead of undercut. No, you, you, you can go up to the, from the, B, the from the, in this case, the G, uh, ma major blues, we got the B flat. We're going to up, which is kind of funny because it's called major blues and we're adding the minor third. So it's kind of like, wait, what? I don't know. I just made up the name. It's kind of a, the best, best way I can think of it. But we took a major scale and we added a blues note and the blues note is... It might be better to say GM plus blues or something, but or GM plus BN, you know, blues note, but yeah, 
It's there is if you go into a, a another lesson with another teacher and you say, "Hey, uh, can you show me the G minor blues or G major blues scale?" He'd be like, "I don't know what that is." <laughs> so <laughs> so don't, don't assume assume this is like standard nomenclature for 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 guitar lingo, but <laughs> nomenclature is definitely not. Guitar lingo. Guitar players like what's nomenclature? <laughs> okay, so, um, but yeah, this kind of that, those kind of licks. Um, that's taking that B flat going up. We can take the B flat and go down. Okay, uh, I'm just going to show that to you because I know Holly likes it. Check it out. Put your second finger because we're going to end up on a, we're going to end up in second position or you know second fret. So. We want, we're, since we're in first position, we want to have, start with our second finger. Just go on the B flat there, which is the third fret of the G string, and slide down to the A. Okay? And that would be a grace note. And then hit the open G, D, uh, the E, the second fret on the D string, open D, and hit the G again, open G. So it's third fret to second fret, open on the G string, and then on the D string, second, open, and then open G. London, John, dang, I heard you got a whole new set of lockdowns, another strain, <laughs> it's like a stupid virus, it's like, it's, it's unrelenting, yeah, just, just, a, just, a, just a heads up, don't watch the uh, coronavirus episode of South Park, okay, <laughs> it's, not, it's hilarious, but it's also long, it's just wrong, as South Park always is. Um, but yeah, so... Or, you can do that too. Uh, the, e, the B flat down to A. Open G. The E, or the second fret there, and then just go right to the open G. That's a fun little lick. Um, so, you know, going down is one thing. Going up to the blues note. Okay, it's another thing. Um, you know, or my hands are still not warmed up. Um, and then um, uh, just playing through the scale too. And that's one of the things, what, what we're gonna do right now. Uh, but the most classic stereotypical bluegrass lick of all time is gonna be learned today. So, okay, it's that. And so that's just playing right through the blues note. Playing a G, A, B flat, B, D, E. I'm literally playing the scale. And then just going back to D and then hitting open G. Okay, so we're going to learn that lick today. And we're going to learn it in all three of the chords, in all three keys, okay? So if you look at the difference between last week's lesson and this week's lesson, look up here in my upper, in the upper right-hand corner, okay? See, it's weird because I have to point to my left to tell you to look in the upper left hand corner but watch that place right there and I'm going to go to yesterday's lesson and you can see it change oh you look I used bold font and there I didn't use bold font my neck is jacking you up I think let me get that neck out of the picture okay so there's yesterday so let's see you can see we have five note scales and then if you look at the in between the second and third note each of those scales we added a note we took that third note and we flatted it so in the case of of G major pentatonic, we added a B flat. In the case of C major pentatonic, we added an E flat. And this one's a little trickier here. In the case of D major pentatonic, we added an F natural because we already had an F sharp. So we wouldn't have F flat, that would be E, but we have F. So it's D, E, F, F sharp, A, and B. Okay, so let's start us out. Let's, let's get the guitars in our hands. Uh, yeah, if you join G Discord, Okay, and I'm going to show you the scale, and then I'm going to eat some breakfast. It's already cold, so it's, it's, just, it's a sad breakfast now, but it still tastes good. Um, let's see. Make sure. Yeah, John, you're going to get welcome out the wazoo here. <laughs> you're going to get a lot of welcome, so just be aware of that. Uh, and I, I'm dying to go back to London. I was supposed to go back to London next week, actually. I got asked if I would go back for a gig. Fly back for a gig, but uh, that obviously isn't going to happen. So, uh, Richard Lawson's here. Uh, good to see you. EZ is here. Uh, I'm just trying to see who's on and say hello. 
We've got 39 people, 43 people right now on. So I'll get to this. Oh, Michael Mason, you're here too. And Avito's here. Oh, goodness. Awesome. Good to see you, man. Long time. Well, not long time, but you are reg you were regular there. Oh, okay, and there's Angelina tuned in from Trinidad. I don't know if she's still on or not, but okay. And Leo. Sorry, Leo, I missed you there. I see you now. Okay. Um, yeah, and in Christmas, I Friday, I won't do a live stream on Christmas morning, uh, but I'll do one Saturday. But I'm, I may do a Christmas a, a jam with Alex on Christmas Day, okay? Just so you know what we do. I don't know what we're going to do. Maybe we'll do jazz. Maybe we'll bring a couple amps in here and try to do some jazz. Although the amp thing didn't work very well. It sounded so distant. Well, when we were in the other room, we were using my laptop. I don't know. We'll figure something out. Maybe we can do jazz on acoustic instruments or something. Um, but normally we do just like jams. And um, so, no, no, uh, Sam, no, it would not be G flat. The F sharp, because in the key of D major, you have an F sharp. Now, it, when it comes to writing music, and I'm already starting to write the, um, I guess, are we going to call this Sad Dad? No, I think we just reserve Sad Dad Bachelor Pad for the, so I've got to come up with a name for this. Um, but uh, you can't really see this very well. But I'm, I'm having to write a lot of accidentals, which are uh, flats and sharps and natural signs. There's three of them. Um, and if you're reading the tab, it's irrelevant. But if you're reading the music, you're going to see a lot of, of what's called accidentals, sharps, flats, and natural signs. Okay, and those are um, uh, because in the same bar you might have an F and an F sharp. You might have an E and an E flat, and so you're going to have to write an E flat, a flat sign for the E flat. And you're going to if you have an E flat before the next E, and you want E natural, you're going to have to put a natural sign in front of it. That's just one of the rules of music. Um, but just again, no quiz on this. <laughs> so take a sip. Yay! No quiz on this. I thought I did some new designs uh, for that, for t-shirt design, but I guess it didn't upload to YouTube, so I haven't seen them yet on YouTube. Let me go back to Teespring and see if I can get them to go. It's too late for Christmas, but, and, you know, and I meant to do a, I gotta remember, next, maybe I'll just do a, you know, a, a birthday gift, Christmas gift. Uh, I could do a birthday gift uh, video, but I thought, I thought, a, you know, birthday gifts for guitar players kind of thing, uh, doing a video of that, because, uh, you know, there's always... Things that you know, guitar players don't know they need, and so I can I could do a video on a bunch of those kind of things. So I think that would be fun. <laughs> um, I got all sorts of stuff that would be really cool. So I need to do a video like that. That it's like I said, it's too late for Christmas. So maybe I'll do it and and just like say hey, this is a great birthday ideas for your guitar player in your life or whatever. Um, yay! Your son's coming this evening. That's awesome, Brian. Yeah, well, all three of our kids will be here Christmas Day, um, and uh, Emma's now here. She just flew in Friday from Missouri, so she's here. And that's not the scale we're working on. Okay, so here's the scale we're working on. Okay, okay there's the open E is the par first part that is is part of the G uh, major blues. Uh, you can see that E note up there, but really you want to kind of be aware of the red notes are the roots. So in the first scale there, the top in the in the top in the top right left corner for you, um, that is uh, those red notes are all G's here. They're all C's, and the red notes down here are D's. And hopefully, I did these right. I'm going to discover that in a second here. Uh, but this this one I know is right. So we're going to start a third fret, bottom string, and then this is we're just going to go zero one two, okay? Zero one two. Yeah. No, I did okay. Yes, uh, Sam, thank you for that. Uh, yeah, and there uh, there wouldn't be a G flat in, in D minor anyway, but that capital M stands for major. That is old school notation. That would be like 60s and 70s notation, and I hated that they did it because it was, I always thought, oh, D minor. Yeah, I can change that. Let me let me change that because I do, you're, I agree with you. I think that's a little confusing, so I can, I can easily change this. Uh, text edit. Boop. You're going to see it change live though. Watch this. It's like magic. I should get my sister to join. Let me text her. <laughs> you all have a lot to say to her. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> I'm just going to say I'm live if you're not working too hard. If she's working, I don't want to bug her. She's, you know, like everybody, she's working from home, but, um, you know, it's probably, I don't know. I would have, a, I would have, I work from home. That's all I do. And it, it's, mm -hmm. I'm distracted 90% of the time. I'm like, oh, the pool's got too many leaves in it. I got to go sweep the pool, you know, and I, and then I go, oh yeah, what's that noise? I heard a noise. What's that noise? You know, and the next thing I'm out, I'm on the roof trying to find where the noise came from. Okay, so, all right, so note the time, 9.37, Bruce, this is where I start to scale. <laughs> Here we go, third fret, bottom string, open A, first fret, second fret, open D, second fret, that's the same, okay, open G, second fret, third fret, there's a magical note, there's the other B flat, here's one and here's the other, and then open B, D, open E and G, so the, the top two strings are the same, nothing's changed. If you look at the um, scale here, shoot, I can't, there we go. If you look at the scale there and you look at the comparison, we're only adding two notes. See that? It kind of magically appears when I do this. If I'd made the second one a little bigger, it would look like it just was magically appearing. Okay? So we're adding two notes, two B flats. In the D, we're going to be able to add three Fs. But in the in the G, we're only add, allowed to add a right and Bruce. 100%. Squirrel. Okay. okay, so let's do the scale uh, ascending and descending, and then I'll show you the lick. We'll do the lick next, and then we'll go to the next scale. Okay, again, start on the G. Open A, first fret, third fret. I love that. Right? That's just like, you know, it's like, I don't know. Cruella de Vil or Winnie the Pooh or something. I don't know. Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> okay. And then open D, E, and that's the same as the other scale. Open G, A, B flat, third fret. All right. And then we go on to B, open B, D, open E, and G. Backwards, we have G, three, zero, three, zero, three, two, zero, two, Zero, two, one, zero, three, and if you want, you can go down to E, which we might. I don't know if I'll write that in the melody. I'm working on the, I'm working on the new, uh, the the song, which hopefully I'll have done by Wednesday. So I'll upload it, and then we can all have, that way. You'll every week you'll have a new song to practice, okay? And I'll I'll put it up. I'll put it up like this. And if you go to the Discord, oh, by the way, did you guys, um, did you ever see that link? Okay, now, right now I've got the Discord link down at the bottom of the page there, uh, or down at the bottom of the window. Um, let me know if you can see this link. You didn't, yeah, Adam's family, yeah, right? Da -da -da. Yeah. Right, yeah, none of our, none of our three kids are married yet. So that, we don't have that conundrum, Brian. Um, but yeah, my, my, it worked out because my, we, my wife and I, we lived in California, but both of our parents were in, um, Indiana and they celebrated Christmas on Christmas Eve and we celebrated Christmas morning. So it was perfect. We spent Christmas Eve with her family and then Christmas morning with my family. So that worked out, but we stopped doing that once the kids were starting to get a little older. Cause every time we flew, it, a, it was five tickets at Christmas time, going to the airports, dealing with all that, the snow and the canceled flights and all that. Mm -hmm. Every time we got sick, everybody got sick and you had the stomach flu or something. It was awful. So uh, we stopped doing that when I think Emma was like three. I don't think she even remembers going to Indiana for Christmas. Um, so that was a bummer, but it was like, saved me a fortune. <laughs> it's like, gosh, it's like all the money you saved up for the whole year went away, you know, at the end of the year because you spent it on plane tickets okay so here's that lick ready okay so all it is is the g major blues scale you play basically the first um notes of it you write right down it uh, so you, uh, da, da, we're gonna go all the way to e okay so it's gonna go g a b flat b d e or third fret on the bottom string zero one two zero two and then we're going to go back to open D, okay, and then hit the open G, 
and then hit the chord. That's kind of how to put a button on it. Buttons, that's that's a musical term. Uh, kind of an inside music term like for in, in the studio. Oh, this thing got, I got to move this. Sorry. When I, there we go. Did somebody say that? And I didn't. Links do not work. Dang it. All right. So, but I'm, I'm going to pin this for a minute. Still, so I'm wondering what happened. Because it if I pinned it, it worked. Hey, we're up to 53. That's awesome. So that's uh, the, the pinned link up there. I think you can see that is is the jam track. Um, let me close this. There we go. Is this jam track that, that we've been practicing over? So you can see I just used that lick right there. Um, very, very common, very, very common lick. It's, it's the most common lick in bluegrass. Should have learned it the first week, but I wanted to learn it in the context of the scale that it came from. Okay. So I feel like that way you get a little bit, a little bit bigger picture on something rather than just learning a lick. You learned the origin of the lick, right? Or the, the, the infrastructure of the lick. And I feel like that's a better way to learn anything. Um, uh, Sam, what are you thanking Sam for? Uh, all these, all, all the best, Holly. My 90 year old dad, it's a long time. All this over. Wow. That's, I, I forgot, I think you said that before, Sam, that he was on a ventilator. That's almost always a death sentence at this point, but uh, they're getting better at treating it, obviously. Back then, that was definitely a death sentence. So that's, that's huge. Um, my sister was just in the hospital. I don't see, did she reply to me? No, she didn't, so. Yeah, it's a G run, yeah. And so it's using that blue G major blues scale. Now, it doesn't lay as well up an octave, okay? It's, it doesn't feel as good. I wouldn't do it that way with the open strings. I would move into the second, or up a position. Uh, so it'd be like, like that. Is how I would do it up an octave, and then there's no reason you wouldn't, you know. Um, so, so yeah, so it's sometimes it, this it, it lays so good just playing it on the bottom, starting on that low G. Okay, all right, let's go to the C chord, and the C chord, the the C major blues is C, the C. Uh, Major pentatonic was C, D, E, G, A, five notes. Of the one, two, three, the five, and the six. But now we added that E flat there. We're adding that flat third. You can think of it as a sharp two, but really I like to think of it as a flat third. Uh, because that's a more of a blues thing, right? Because in the blues we would be doing like. We'd be doing a, a, a flat third anyway. So it creates the blues sound by adding the flat and thinking of it as a flat third. So, so we have C which is the root, D, which is the second, E flat, which is the flat three, E, which is the three, then up to G, which is the fifth, and then to A, which is the sixth. That five, six thing. That's what five and six sound like, okay? It's a very, very common little thing. Now let's play it. Um, we can start bottom string, open, third fret, open, and then third fret, okay? That gets us to C. Really, this is where we kind of want to start this scale. Yeah, my mother-in-law just had it too. Uh, she's better. Uh, she, she all she had was horrible nausea. She like didn't eat for a week and lost weight and got really weak. And we were worried, but but she was home the whole time. She never had to go to the hospital. She's eighty-four. So and my friend's uh, <laughs> my friend's mother. She's ninety-two and she had it. They, the whole house had it. And uh, she all she had was a little headache. She tested positive. Uh, now apparently you can get it again. So you know we still have to be careful. I don't know. Um, okay, yeah, shuffle, exactly. Exactly, Sam. Okay, so oh, so the bottom of part of that C major blues is O, 3, O, 3, okay? But once we get to there, there's, here's where we really start. We get, so that's C, and it, so that's third fret. And then next string, open, one, two. 
And there's our second, our flat three, and our three. You can even play that again. It's kind of what is Crew of Deville. Somebody said uh, Adam's Family, you know, Winnie the Pooh. I don't know. It just sounds like something. Okay. And then we go to the open G, the A right there. Okay. Then we have first finger on C, third finger on D, and then here's our E flat again, right below the open E on the top string, and then third fret. Okay? It's a little hard, it's a little tricky. And I probably don't play that scale like that. I would probably do this. Right? There's the there's the G G lick in C. Um the G riff in C. But, um, you know, and I would definitely, I might do something like that. I might, I totally do this, but doing it, going to that open E string is kind of weird, you know, but I'm, I'm going to write probably when I work on our song this week, um, uh, or next couple days, I will, it, you know, that will make an appearance somehow. Um, I'll work it in melodically somehow. <laughs> That's the challenge. That's my challenge for the week, right? Yeah, you ran ventilators for 40 years. Wow, that's that's crazy. Well, you need to go back to work, Dan. I think they need you out there. Come on, come out of retirement. Put that guitar down. Okay, so let's play this again. Let's go ahead and start on C, okay? Let's start on that note and go third fret and then on the D string, zero, one, two, and then zero, two, and then one, three, four, okay? And zero, three. And then backwards, it's gonna be three, zero, and then, uh, four, three, one, okay. Two, open. Two, one, zero, and three. And there's gonna be little pieces of it that you're gonna use. Uh, I remember last week I was laboring over whether I was gonna show you all three of these or just show you the G major blues. Um, but as I was starting to write the song, I was kind of going, you know what, I'm going to definitely be able to utilize these. It's going to make for a more complex song, um, but you're probably going to be reading the tab, um, and then, you, you know, uh, so it will make it easy. Once you, you know, I'm trying to make it make sense, so it shouldn't be too hard. Whatever, I've, that's kind of where it's going right now. Um, so we'll see what happens, but, um, so let's play that C scale again one more time and then I'll show you the C bluegrass lead. C, third fret, fifth string, open, one, excuse me, oh, zero, one, two on the third, str uh, fourth string, sorry, on the D string. So D, E flat, E, then open G, A, second fret, then go to the C note, so we're not playing the open B string this time, and then we go to the third fret and fourth fret, oh, you're still there, okay. Okay, and oh, and there, the Discord link is down there. I'll, I'll pin that in a little bit, okay, Bruce? Uh, Bruce and, and Dennis, I'll pin the Discord link in a little bit. Uh, be, but right now I want to have this, the jam up there, this. So that's what's up there now is the link to that. And I can see people are practicing with it because it's going up in spins, so that's good. Um, but less dislikes, which is good. Not less, but the same. Hasn't gone up. I mean, come on. It's a free jam track. Why are you disliking? What's your problem? <laughs> okay, so go. let's go descending. Three on the top string, open. And then four, three, one on the, on the second string. And I'm sorry if I'm going too fast. I really am. I'm trying to go slow. But this seems slow to me. Because <laughs> I'm amazing. Second fret, open. I'm my biggest fan. Uh, let's see. It's two, one, zero, and then three. And if you want to continue. Yeah, I don't know if it's me or... Uh, okay, well, let me show you the lick, and then you can practice the lick. And my breakfast is sitting there. I'm just going to have to heat it up in the microwave. But Okay, so the C lick, the... Okay is gonna be played, start on the third fret, fifth string, then zero, one, two, and then open G, 
second fret to the A note, then to the second fret again, and then hit the C note there on the first fret of the first or second string. Okay, so you're basically playing straight up the scale from the root to the sixth, and then you go back to the fifth, and then you go up to the high root, and then hit the chord. Okay. Okay. Now, um, all right, Dennis. So, so practice that lick. And I'm just gonna snoop around here in the uh, in the settings and see if there's anything that I. I changed live chat, enable live chat. Yeah, that's, that should be, I don't know why that was. See, the weird thing is the enable live chat thing was already checked. Um, oh, the YouTube alerts aren't always 100%. I know it's, yeah, it's tough. I, I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, stream settings, no. It's not going to be there. Analytics, viewer activity, stream health, merchandise, no. Um, yeah, see, the new merchandise isn't showing up, so I want to fix that. All right. Now, I can't click away from anything else in this window, unfortunately. Um, oh, I can share this, though. That's cool. Boop. Oh. No, I can't. Okay. Cancel that. All right. Um, add stream marker. Oh, well, that's cool. I didn't know I could do that. Create highlight video. <laughs> Funny. I said, how do it with? No, cancel. Oh, interesting. Well, that's kind of cool. Um, insert add. <laughs> okay. I want to hit that and see if you guys get. Oh, add insert it. Oh, that's funny. Well, it'll probably be on the replay. <laughs> It's going to say, what does this add button do? <laughs> Insert add button do, and all of a sudden you get an ad. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, yeah, it doesn't say, I see nothing in live chat. Here it says, participants, pop out chat, toggle timestamp. What is that? Tog it doesn't finish the word. Toggle timestamps. I don't know what that means. Uh, closed captions, unlist live replay once stream ends. No. Enable DVR. No, let's see. Uh-uh. That and that is enabled. Um, sorry, I touched my face, so let's all take a sip. Yes, if we were talking about B E minor, uh, exactly, exactly, Jeff, you're one hundred percent correct. Uh, G G major blues is the same as E minor blues, exactly same notes, except G major. That's so it's kind of like an aha moment in some ways. And I do think in G minor blues, but I, I, I you're right. I, I, um, I mean, yeah, G major blues. I do definitely think G major blues. Uh, G minor blues works over is this as well, which is fun. We haven't gotten there yet. We're going to do G minor pentatonic, and then we're going to do all the blues as well. So that's going to be fun. We'll start adding. Essentially, now here's another thing. I was I was wondering about this. If we did a uh, a, a composite of these three scales, and we haven't done the D1 yet, so we're getting ready to do the D major scale here in a second, the D major blues scale. But if we did a composite of all the notes, okay, we'd have G, we'd have A, we'd have B flat, we'd have B, we'd have C, we'd have D, we'd have E flat, E, F, F sharp, G. So basically, other than A flat and D flat, which D flat is the blues note in the G in the key of G, okay? It would be the minor blues note. If that makes any sense. Uh, but with the exception of those notes, that's ten of twelve notes that we're justifying via scales over a G major, a diatonic progression, okay? So a normal diatonic key has seven notes in it. So, the, so this progression G C G D has only. Uh, only has seven notes in it, but we're we can actually we're actually adding another three notes here that didn't exist, and so we're almost to all twelve notes. And I think I could justify every note except maybe A flat, but even A flat over D works great. So 
I think we could end up justifying all 12 notes at some point. In other words, you could play through um, a, a very simple bluegrass progression and um, literally play all 12 notes. Isn't that cool? Um, so basically implying there is no such thing as a wrong note. Uh, you might be playing a note in the wrong place, um, but like I said, the, e, the A flat, which wouldn't work very good over, wouldn't work very good over the G chord, but over the when you get to that D chord in bar four of the progression, if you do that lick, that's the E flat. That's the A flat right there. Okay, but well, we're gonna get to those scales later. Okay, that's uh, uh, I think next week. Or maybe we will get away from the pentatonics and we go to uh, maybe go to mixolydian scales. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. But but ultimately, um, these are all tools. And what makes it difficult for me to solo over these and as an example for you all is that I'm used to using all the tools in the tool chest, not just one tool. And so it's really difficult to go, okay, I got to stick with major, major blues scales. And then the C. And the G, you know, it's very difficult. Okay. Now the D major one, that one's a mess. Okay. The D major blues scale down there. Okay. Remember, here's what it looked like before. It, it was already a mess. Okay. The D major pentatonic was already like, what the heck is going on here? All right. Note the two red notes are both D. So those are, those are your two roots. Um, and so those are good points to center from. Oh, you just had an ad buff? <laughs> oh, it's buff buffet. It's buffeting. I'm, it looks good right now here. It may be on your end, but I'll keep an eye on my on my uh, thing. Let me see if it said something here, because so, it'll tell me uh, in in the health stream. Right now, my stream is fine. Okay, um, and we're at forty seven viewers. Okay. Um, so you can see, even now with the D, ma D major pentatonic, it was like, okay, D, you got three notes on one string, one note on another, um, and you know, you've got the, it's just a weird scale. It's not very natural by itself. Yeah, see, I always want to go to that open G. Um, even I do that, so. And you just gotta, Oops, got to practice the scale. So I'm, uh, and remember, you asked me what I wanted to learn. I said, hey, I'd like to learn bluegrass, so let's learn it together. So this is, <laughs> this is not to imply I'm some expert on, on bluegrass, uh, but I, 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 know, I know guitar. Uh, just search for link problem on Google, and you might have links set to be flagged as spam. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis, for looking that up. I don't see... Oh, weird. I can... Okay, I, de I do definitely see lots of... Um, it's so weird. And then edit. I don't see any anything that says spam anywhere. Uh, or anything that refers to links at all. So let me wait. Maybe go if I go further down on this. Let me see what's down here. Because that could be. I think I checked this. Uh, this should go into live stream. Done. Uh, audience set by you. This video is made not made for kids. Yeah. I just think they'd be bored. <laughs> video contains paid no. Tags, no, the current date, standard list, allow embedding, shows, yeah, allow embedding, that's not that. Hold all comments for review, what? Oh, for, for the later though, that's the, that's has nothing to do. You gotta show how many videos, add a fundraiser. Dang it, I don't know. By the way, my coffee is brought to you by uh, John Y. John, you're not on today. Normally John would be on, hey, Juan, what's going on? Good to see you. I'm the best. Are you talking to someone else? <laughs> um, you're not talking to me, are you? You're talking to someone in the street. 
Uh, but John John sent me a, a, a Starbucks gift card, so this is uh, this is from him. So um, and and probably the next you know seven cups of coffee are from John. Uh, so I have to say, brought to you with a generous grant from the John John Y Foundation. Okay, so let's not worry about the bottom two strings on this D. Um, you know, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. But really, let's, because, oh, we got to go back to the blues. Here we go. There's the major blues. Okay, so that's just, that bottom scale down there is just a mess, all right? It's not that bad if we just take a little piece of it, okay? So let's do this, and you'll notice I went ahead and put the E there as well as there. I should have put it in a little ghost E. So we got two, I'm sorry, B. We've got two B notes in there. So that's a bit of a mistake, but... Uh, but actually it plays to our favor because this is probably how I would play this part of the scale, okay? So let's do this D string. And then we're going to put our first finger on the second fret. So we're going to move our whole hand to technical, technically second position, okay? Yep. Yep. Sam, exactly. Yep. Oh, does so somebody need that explaining? Sorry, I, I apologize. Angelita! In Trinidad, oh man, I bet Trinidad's gorgeous. Just be afraid of hurricanes. We have earthquakes here, so <laughs> somewhere you got something. Okay, so D. Oh, Holly, God bless you. <laughs> See, no, the Starbucks button. Uh, okay, so here's D. Okay, then first finger on the second fret, second finger on the third fret, third finger on the fourth fret. Okay, and there's our Corella de Ville or. D. There's our D one of those. So this is the root, second, flat three, and three. All right, that's our ma major blues because we got that. Got the major, the happy. Uh, we were in D. Ooh, happy, happy. But we had that that flat three in there. And the other thing you can practice if you want is to not play the second, right? Just play the root, the flat three, and the third. all those okay now that you've done that then we just we just do that and we go to there and that's all we're going to do for a second for now okay uh so we have d so open d second fret third fret fourth fret okay and then second fret third fret and then i'm sorry second fret fourth fret with the third finger and then sec, uh, third fret with the second finger. Uh, it's confusing because I moved my hand up one fret, so it's messing me up. Okay, let's take that backwards. Play that D note. That's a D note. Play that third fret on the second string with your second finger. <laughs> There's so many numbers. And then fourth fret. There's your B, A, and then we're gonna go F sharp, F, E, and D, which is also kind of cool. But the the yeah, we're not, don't worry, we're not using the pinky on this one. Okay. There's our, there's our bluegrass lick in D, all right? So open D string, and then go. Put a little gap, sit on that D note, sit on that root note. D is the root of D. Sit on that note for just a second, and then do the, okay? Right? It would be written, you know, maybe eighth note and then the rest of them sixteenth notes. Um, with a whole note or something at the end. But um, the first note should be a little bit longer. So, dun, and then two, three, four, two, four, two. <laughs> oh, poo. Or pew. Wait. That's how you spell pew in a church. A church pew, right? Oh, pew. <laughs> Which is exasperating because pews are uncomfortable. Having worked at churches for 40 years, I can tell you, church pews are uncomfortable. Okay. Um, and so that's our, that's the lick and D. So what you could do it, uh, so this is the classic bluegrass, the bluegrass 101 lick in D. Finish it off with a D chord. Is 
that could be the beginning of the. That should make that the beginning of the our our uh, our bluegrass jam uh, for this one. I got to come up with a name for this, so I don't know. We're gonna have to. <laughs> Uh, we have to find a name. Uh, uh, okay, I might have to call it like the No Link Blues or something. <laughs> so okay, so I'm gonna grab okay the Discord link that's right here. I'm gonna go ahead and grab that and I'm gonna pin it. Okay, man, have I been chatty today? All right, let me grab that and I'm gonna pin it. And I think you can see the pin links, right? Am I correct in that? Oh, what am I trying to do here? Oh, it's up here. Uh, introductions. Yeah, here it is. Copy. All right. Let me know if you can see the pen. This is a pen. Okay, so that is the Discord link. Um, I will look into, or unvaccinated blues, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, uh, belly. Um, <laughs> get in me belly. Let's see. Um, yes, exactly. That's how they totally keep you awake. And serve. Our pastor likes to keep the church freezing cold. and goes, A, it prevents germs and also... It kills germs and it keeps everybody awake. <laughs> it cracks me up. I was like, yep. Yeah. No, it's not untrue. Yeah, they, yeah, exactly, Jeff. They have access to every single note you could justify. I mean, it's the same with jazz. Um, you can totally justify, even over one chord, you can justify any note. Particularly the five chord, the seventh chord, you know, play an A7. Uh, you can treat it as like you can do the flat five, the sharp five, the flat nine, the sharp nine. You can do the major seventh on the way to the flat seven. You know, if you want, um, you can do the the, the uh, four, the the flat five. Well, I already said the flat five. So yeah, I mean, you pretty much justify any any note in jazz. That's not that's not as difficult. Bluegrass is just you don't realize they're doing it. And I think of bluegrass players as being very very much kind of in the same realm as jazz players mainly because jazz and bluegrass are such an improviser's milieu i can't really think of any style of music that has so much improvisation in it um and so the, they they are really and there are definitely some bluegrass players that are good jazz players too so and vice versa yes you bought the which? Oh, the big book, the Rick Beato's big book, the theory one. I'm probably going to be teaching contrary to that all the time and not realize it. Okay. So let me try to jam along with the jam track, which I just took the pin down. But oh, oh, did, did can you say? Did you say you can see the pin? Hey, Holly, happy birthday! Uh, let's see. There it is. I always forget it starts on the fifth. Happy birthday. Now, if I were to play it for Holly, it would be like, she loves all the grace notes. Pepper, Pepper almost got in an accident just to get back to see me. <laughs> no, no, she's not, she's not here. Pepper's not here to see me. She's here to talk to all you alls. <laughs> and that's how she would say it, right? I know you're from California, Pepper, but you've lived in Alabama long enough to say all you alls. <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah. Someone, uh, I got a question. Um, so the, the the video that caused all of you to be here, which is the seven tips for older beginners, I did that follow up where I went uh, suggestions from viewers, 
And I played something, I don't remember. Um, and I did some lick at the beginning and somebody goes, can you tell me what, can you tell me what song that is? I want to buy that song or I want to learn that song or whatever. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. It was just me noodling. So that's what guitar players do. So I'm going to play the jam track for a little bit. I'm going to try to do the blues thing. Um, I'm going to slow it down, which is again, the great thing about, um, the great thing about this YouTube thing. Okay. So the, the jam, this bluegrass jam that I had posted earlier is it 100 beats per minute, okay? Um, but uh, So if it's 100, you can slow it down 0.75. It's going to go down to 7, 75 beats per minute. Oh. So now it's a little slower. And that makes it easier for me. Oh, did it, why did it stop? I didn't hit stop. Oh, it's been doing this. See, it froze. Safari just froze. Oh. Close the window. New window. Let's see if I can find it in history because I don't want to have to go hunt for it again. I'm not. asking you to make a donation. Get the same ad every single time. It's like the election never ended. <laughs> it's like, oh, God help us all. Oh, here, skip ad. I can do that. All right. One, oh, two. No, I got to go back to that. It just reset. It. Which is good to know, it reset to... So I put it on 0.75, so it's going to play at 75 B BPM as opposed One, to two, the 100 three, that it's written at. Four. Okay. And the progression is right there. Okay, right here. C. G. D. G. the G lick on every one of these. I mean the Notice how I moved up for that one. Changed position. Owens, you know, hee-haw vibe, you know, it's got that kind of vibe going on. It's kind of a fun, I mean, it's definitely a fun, uh, fun scales to play over. And, um, and I could get away with just playing the G major blues for the whole scale, the whole progression. Okay. One of the things I like about the G major blues. Okay. Let's talk about that. Um, G, A, B flat, right? The B flat is the flat three. Okay. Let's go up here. G, play the G note there. Okay. Play a G chord. Okay, now play the G note again, and play the A, and hit the B flat. So we're almost to the B, right? We can go to the open B string. Okay. No, B Kitty, you're not wrong there. Um, everybody trying to outdo each other. I've been in those circles. It's pretty fun. Yeah. 
Um, it's not Holly's birthday yet. It's tomorrow. <laughs> Sorry. Everybody's saying happy birthday, Holly. Today's my birthday. You didn't say anything about my... No, I'm kidding. You know it was in July. Wait. Yeah, it's y'all. Yep, it's y'all. <laughs> See, I'm not too far off. I've spent enough time in the South to know. Um, so, um, so that that B flat, all right, actually works really nice over the C chord. Okay, that's the seventh, right? So when I if I play over the progression. Check it out here, G. The B doesn't work good over the C, but that B flat is magic. So, so definitely, you know, so definitely you could get away with playing just the one scale over that whole progression and you'd be fine. It just kind of over the over the over the C you're going to want to avoid the B note. I'm talking about the progression up here at the top, the very very tippy top one, okay? And then this first chord here. You could literally or scale here. You could literally play that over that whole progression. You would be somewhat fine. You just want to maybe those B naturals you might want to avoid over the C chord. It's way too pretty. And then the over the D you might want to avoid that that uh, B flat that might not work very well over the D. Okay, my breakfast, which is so tasty, is sitting right there, and I can't eat it right now until we're done. It's just this bummer. I'm so hungry. Forgetful human. Uh, uh, tall autocorrects. <laughs> tall autocorrects to y'all. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> Tall autocorrects to y'all on your phone. You're kidding, right? Oh, Dan, thank you so much. <laughs> Dan, Dan's supporting guitar players' caffeine level. Yeah, like I need any more caffeine. You, you guys don't know what you're asking for here. Um, that is uh, that is hilarious. Forgetful. Uh, that cracks me up. I, I do. It's just funny because my sister sent me. Uh, a text, my older sister, not Lee, Gwen, we were talking about Lee, I think, right? And she sent something and it said, and I have to be careful with my language here. I can't remember what's here. I sent it to Lee because I thought it was so funny. Uh, I did a screenshot. You know, when you do a screenshot of a, of a, a text thread, uh, here, here it is. Uh, yeah, how, how, how was your Thanksgiving? You know, and then I, I said, I told her and she said, nice. Yes, Lee's, my sister Lee's felt dick with a low grade fever for about a week. <laughs> it autocorrected sick or she typed it wrong. And I just thought, wow, if it autocorrects to that word, I'm like, she felt what? <laughs> and I sent that to Lee and she thought it was hilarious. I don't think Lee's on though. I, I told her I was, uh, a mom, but she she's probably working or she's on a conference call or something like that. Yeah, so it's all right. She'll I'll, I'll let her know on Wednesday and she can she'll join in. Maybe Saturday she'll have off or something. The trouble with the whole working from home COVID thing is that we tend to generally everybody's like I tell people when I'm working with people I know that work in an office but they're working from home. Like I was just dealing with some people. Uh, I got an email late from Universal Music Group Publishing, right? Because I'm signed. I signed a, a publishing administration deal with Universal, and um, uh, and she sent me an email like at four thirty-five or something like that. So I repl and I I got the email around five o'clock. So I, I replied and I said, "Do not reply to this email. You are not allowed to work after five on Friday." Blah blah blah. And she replied and I said, "Now you're really really in trouble." And it was. Uh, it was actually Scooter Bronze, one of Scooter Bronze people, and I said, "I'm telling Scooter, you know, I'm going to get her in trouble." So, um, so anyway, um, uh, that is uh, 
that is where she's at Lee. So I'm hopefully on Saturday she won't be working, so maybe she can join us. Because we're going to move Friday's live stream to Saturday. Um, and Wednesday I will have a new song, hopefully, for you. i got to start it. So I, I've got to, I think... I'm <laughs> I'll figure it out. It's got to have a theme. It's got to have variations, and it's got to have a B section. I think the B section is going to be one of the because I'm like, you know, like that. Some play on that, so that'll be fun. Um, so, two twenty p.m. So yeah, you're four hours ahead of us or ahead of me. So you're, um, <laughs> yeah. You're, you're uh, An uh, Angelina's uh, in Trinidad, and so she's uh, four hours ahead of California. So you're one hour ahead of, of New York and East Coast people. Uh, I think, Pepper, you're, you're, you're on East Coast time, right? Eastern time? Holly, I, don't, I forget where you are. Where are you? Notice, guys, I'm only talking to the women on the chat. <laughs> like, Angela? Yeah, because because trust me, I about eleven percent of my viewers are women. Because <laughs> of this, it would be fifty percent if it was Alex up here. It'd be fifty percent. So, uh, let's see. Uh, oh, Adam, what's going on? Yeah, it, it does. It is breakfast time here. Definitely. Uh, and we're losing viewers here. Let's um, see. Interesting stuff. It, oh, it's six. Yeah, this is live. I'm live, Adam. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But in California, it's breakfast time. It's 1024 right now in California. Okay. Uh, B Kitty on use of garage band. Where's your question, B Kitty? Dang it. Man, you guys are chatty. The questions are going away fast. I mean, the, the stream is moving fast. Okay. Hey, Tom, can I use GarageBand to get those chord progressions to play over and practice who I need to pony up for Logic Pro? No, you don't need to. No. Uh, but do, what do you mean get those chord progressions to play over and practice? Uh, you do not need to pony up for Logic Pro, though it's got to be the cheapest software program in the world per feature. For $200, it's got an insane amount of stuff. I mean, it's just unfreaking believable um, Yosemite, Yos, yeah, I used to call it just Yosemite, <laughs> I didn't know, I knew what you, I knew you said, Yosemite Sam, but I didn't know Yosemite was a place, when I lived in Indiana, I had no idea, um, so, uh, GarageBand, as far as getting those chords, um, I mean, there's software where if you want to snag those chords, and you can take them, uh, to grab from YouTube, I'm, I really shouldn't say that, though, um, but you can listen there, um, I could also upload, feasibly the mp3 to um i could send you the mp3 of that if that's what you're asking for um uh but um what but you can i would create your own jam you've got garage band um, heck you could even use the microphone on um if you want to come up with a new progression you want to play in a different key you want to do different tempos um, I, you can use a mic in the laptop or a mic on the iMac or whatever you use. If you've got GarageBand, you've got Mac, you've got an Apple product. So, uh, you could even use your phone. I think, I think GarageBand comes on the iPhone now too. So, um, although I think I delete mine cause I, I would never use it, but, um, you can record, you know, the only thing is you're going to want some earphones so that you can not have the speakers on. So you don't get like feedback. And so you don't get like this weird echoey thing. Uh, if you're a real, real novice, if you have a microphone then problem, and earbuds, then problem solved. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and do these scales. Again, like I said, on uh, Wednesday, we'll have a song to work on, or at least I'll have a song for you to start to work on. Um, and I'll try to upload it before. Joseph, what's going on? Rancho Cucamonga is a place to... Yeah, it is. <laughs> That's not too far from me. I've been to Rancho Cucamonga. Did a gig at a pizza shop like a hundred years ago there, I remember. I have a good friend that lives there. Uh, Aldo Bentevegna, I think lives in Rancho Cucamonga. <laughs> Aldo Bentevegna from Rancho Cucamonga. 
Okay, there's the name of our song. <laughs> no, no, I'm not going to call it that. That would be hilarious, though. Aldo Bentevegna from Rancho Cucamonga. <laughs> it's a bluegrass song. It's like, it's the least bluegrass sounding, you know. Uh, 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 bluegrass sounding title in history. <laughs> Which is maybe why I should use it. Okay, maybe I will. Okay. Uh, so, yep, you're Pacific time too. So here, let's do the scales one more time. We're gonna go A sending, D sending. Here's your third fret, bottom string. Then zero, one, two, zero, two, zero, two, three, zero, three, zero, three. And then backwards, three, zero, three, zero. Okay, that's a very familiar shape. And then three, Two zero and you're, I know a lot of you are thinking, oh, it's a blue, it's an E minor blue scale, and it's totally right. Same thing. E or second fret, open, second, first, open, third. But see, that sounds different than if I went to E. So what? It has a very minor sound over the E major chord when I play E minor. E minor blues. When I play G major blues, even though it's the same notes, over G it has a very happy note. Even the flat thirds, they kind of want to go up to... The flat thirds want to go to the third in bluegrass, in the bluegrass context. Playing over a major chord. A happy major chord with no seventh. B uh, bad Dad Bachelor Pad. Um, crash Pad, yeah. <laughs> bad Dad Bachelor Pad. I think I'm going to save that for when I do the minor blues over the minor pentatonic over that may happen next week or the week after so i've got that name written down hopefully i'll remember we'll remember that you'll help me remember it you'll make me remember it okay c major let's just do the c to c here okay we're only going to go that far c third fret fifth string open d first fret second fret g open g second fret and then c okay so that would be the basic scale that we would want to work on. There's the leg. Okay. Backwards, first fret on the second string. Second fret, open. Second fret, first, open, third fret. Now, for extra credit, those of you who have already got that down. Oh, I'm sorry. You can work on the higher end of it. Which is really fun. Once you get In the context of the jam, it's just like really goofy sounding, right? But it's kind of fun. I mean, you, you wouldn't want to do you want to do it too much. But to kind of hint at that little, that, that, that major minor third thing, you know, the E flat E in this case, to play those two notes against each other is really kind of fun. It creates dissonance. Okay. Your apologies again. I don't have my contacts in. Where are my glasses? Because I have to migrate. Oh, migraines this morning. You know, okay, Holly, I got a tip for you because I get migraines every now and then too. You know what I've started doing? is I've put a humidifier, especially in the winter, where it gets really dry, I put a humidifier in the bedroom at night. And I turn it on just, obviously, just on at night. And that keeps the air humid, and that help, boy, it, it really keeps, the headaches that emanate from my sinuses, uh, it really ends those. I, I haven't woken up with a headache all winter since I, since I remembered that I did that. Because I always forget in the summer, I bring it into my office, but try that and see if it works. Yeah, crashing train. Exactly. Exactly, Jeff. Crashing trains. You know. Joe, Joe, uh, Joseph's a Bulldog Inn. He plays where I live. Oh. Oh, oh you're talking about Les Paul. Yeah. Yeah. Les Paul was uh, 
a good guitar player, an amazing inventor. I mean, gosh, think of all multi-track recording is one of his inventions, which is crazy. So, um, let's see. I'm crazy when I talk like that. Okay. So, okay, let's do the D major blues, and that's going to be, so I'm taking a D major pentatonic, and I'm adding a flat third to it. That's why I'm calling it the D major blues scale. Okay, so we have D, and then I'm going to move my hand position up uh, so Holly doesn't have to use her pinky, because her pinky hasn't had her coffee yet. Um, oh, Bob Summers. That's right. That's tonight. That hasn't happened since 1264 or something like that. What direction, Leo, is in the sky? Is it? Yeah, the guitars. Yeah, so I, I've actually got another humidifier. Uh, I just got another one to put in my office because I got to keep my office humidified. Uh, it's only 27% right now, which is not good. So, in fact, the humidifier is not in the office right now. I got to do that. Okay. So hit the open D string. And then first finger on the second fret, and then go one, two, three, like that. So you're at second fret, third fret, fourth fret. Okay. And then second fret, the A. No, so no open G string. Okay. And so we have four notes on the D string, two notes on the B string, and only one note on the, I'm sorry, two notes on the G string, and only one note on the B string. And that's the D lick, the bluegrass lick. Did it? Hey, Bruce, did anybody answer a question? Can you see the pinned link up there? I pinned the Discord link at the top. Can anybody see that? I don't remember. I missed, I missed uh, seeing that. Look, low sky to the west. I'm going to have to get high somewhere. <laughs> you know, that's the thing come out the way I said. I'm going to have to go up a hill to see it better. From our, We're surrounded by trees in my house. Yeah, <laughs> Holly, you keep the fancy guitars. Uh, let's see. Leo, you answered that question, and it's going by so fast. 9 p.m., okay, our time, okay. Look west, okay, we will do. I think Beth, Beth set an alarm. Sunset happens early, though. It's like today's the shortest day of the year, or tomorrow is the shortest day of the year. I can't remember. Okay. Yes, it's there if you click on the three dots. Okay, interesting. That's so weird. And in there, yeah, participants. So it's interesting because I can see the number of participants which I've got 55 current viewers right now. We did really well today. We got up to 65, maybe a new record. But the only, it's, it's funny, it's all, the, it's all you alls. That, it's like the same 12 people that are <laughs> participating in the chat. So mostly in the chat, it's not, it's not most of the people aren't chatting, which is not unusual. Uh, uh, on the fret of the A string. No, I was uh, I was I was playing the open D. You're talking about in the uh, D major blues. Yeah, I, I haven't used the fifth fret of the A string yet in this, um, but yeah, you could do uh, like that. You mean you could do it like that? I don't care. I don't care. In fact, so what 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 Sam is asking is that D lick, the classic D lick. Doing it that way with the open starting on the open D string or using the D string down here. Holly won't do this one because it's um, <laughs> because of the pinky. No, but I would seriously, I would, I would do either, or I might even, you know, there's a million ways to do the same lick. That's the great thing about the guitar. Um, yeah, I'm the same way. Um, Yeah, I need to see your studio, Holly. Oh, did you answer the question where you are, what city you're in, or what area you're in? You don't need to give me the city. 
Okay, good. It's at the top of the chat. Okay, good. Thanks, Holly. Well, you know, once the COVID thing's over too, I can we can do a we can do a meet and greet at some point. Um, that will be fun in Southern California uh, for anybody who happens to be in the area. Um, I don't know how many people show up. I can say, meet me here, and I go there and it's like I'm all by myself. Well, uh, you know, I don't know. We can meet at a guitar center too, or something fun like that. But well, uh oh, stream is buffering. Dang it. Oh, right. Oh, you said that, Yosemite. That's right. I knew that. I knew that, Holly. Thank you. Sorry. And I still never been to Yosemite. I've got to go. I just, you know, I want to get, I always try to think, oh, I want to stay at that hotel. In fact, we would have done it this past summer, that famous hotel. And it's like 500 bucks a night. So I wanted to do like one night there and then one night at the cheap hotel. Out this, so I don't have to just drive up for one day. I want to be able to stay out there for a couple of days. Um, but uh, it's like, it's really expensive, but it's a freaking gorgeous hotel. It, the Disneyland, the California Hotel at Disneyland in, in Anaheim was modeled after that hotel, but it still doesn't do it justice because, man, that, that place is freaking amazing. Uh, oh, Sam, you've got a lot of cloud coming. Yeah, we're supposed to maybe get rain next week, which would be amazing. Can't wait to turn off my sprinklers. <laughs> <laughs> Save me some money. Um, that's ex having green grass is expensive in Southern California. I should probably get rid of it, but it's like this is my first house. I just bought a house. I've lived in an apartment building on concrete for the last thirty-five years. I want to want to have some green grass to put under my feet. So I do actually enjoy it. You know, we throw the baseball in and stuff like that out there. You know, it's still Americana kind of thing. So. You would drive to Southern California. Well, yeah, especially if it's not, <laughs> if it's cold where you are, you might want to come here in the winter. So, I don't know. I guess we could do a jam. I think my thinking is more we just kind of get some food or something. Like, it'll be nice when we can do that again if ever, if that is ever going to happen. Who knows? If there's any restaurants left other than Chili's. <laughs> just don't want to go to Chili's. Okay. Uh, so, we've done all the scales. Uh, we'll talk about the like the composition of the chords uh, or the scales about adding the flat three right uh, what else is there anything else any you know De Dennis I thought for a second oh I should I should put it that discord link on the discord site <laughs> it's like yeah. uh, Denise what's going on let's see one of my daughters is a general manager at Oakhurst of three hotels. Her daughter is manages a hotel in Clovis. Oh, get you a deal. Nice. Clovis, I know Clovis. Yeah, I forgot. I've been to Clovis. Um, that's by Yosemite, right? Oh, do, do, uh, Daru, you're in Seattle. Um, so let's see. Um, okay, so let me let me show you. Uh, okay, let me show you another lick that kind of utilizes this flat three major three or the three the b flat and b the e flat e the f and f sharp the flat three the three kind of dynamic here so do this go to the first fret there this is over the g chord okay and hammer on or play the second fret okay so now you're going the minor three to the major three so you're, you're implying oh this is a minor chord but then you're going right to a major okay and then hit the d open d string so go can also do is if you can go so you go to open D so you go B flat to B to open D and then you could do the same thing but go to E right or you could go to F which is not part of the scale but you could go to so I'll play that in a second so you can hear what that sounds like or you could go to the G so you'd be skipping a string so if you look at my right hand I'm playing the fifth string and then I'm playing the G string fifth string to this third string so it sounds like this normally do it that way again the, the I normally I would normally do it somewhere there uh, the, the open strings throw me off right it kind of has 
hands. I, so you can do it there too, but um, you can go B flat to B to D and then to G. That's kind of cool. And over C it would be. Um, so, Saria, what type of techniques do I need to do? Um, what sort of techniques do I need to learn to be able to play songs that would require me to strum and pluck frequently? Oh, uh, uh, that's a good question. I'm not exactly sure, you know, because usually when you're playing rhythm, you're strumming, and when you're playing, oh, you mean finger pick? Like, pluck like this? Uh, those are two different techniques. I did some lessons on finger picking and I did some lessons on um, strumming that you can look at if you go back in the live stream. Um, and I don't have this updated so much, but let me let me drop this in for now. Um, oh, it's funny. I you know I didn't even realize. I think I can drop this in. What happens if I do this? Oh, it won't let me drop a photograph in there. Well, no, surely it will. If I go, that's weird. Add image. Yeah. Okay. I got to go find it and browse. Uh, let's see. Uh, What am I looking for? Oh, there we go. Gosh, I don't have an alphabetical order. That's what's jacking me up. There we go. And then here. Oh my gosh. There we go. Um, what, what, what is this? Photo five. Ah, uh, this. Will this work? It did. Oh my gosh, it's giant. Hilarious. So this is this this is the picture I was telling you about at um, Henson. This is back in 2014. That's me and Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber's on the left, and it, you can see on my my shoe is off, and you see my white sock. Because I had a grounding problem with my acoustic guitar because uh, Josh wanted to mic my guitar and uh, take it direct. And so when he, when he was soloing up the direct signal, it was like buzzing a uh, 60 cycle hum or something. And so it went away when I put my hand on the cord, but I can't play and put my hand on the cord. So I took my shoe off and put my hand on the other end of, or my foot on the other end of the cord and I became the ground, which is not dangerous. It's not that kind of ground. And then there's Justin. You can see he's a lefty. Um, and they just delivered some guitars for him to play. Like that wasn't his guitar or anything. That's a Taylor, and then he had they had a, a Lefty Martin. Um, and then what's that other guitar? That's my Dobro right there. So I guess I was doing some. I had the Dobro out, and then I think I forget what song we're playing there, but we're jamming together, both capo to the first fret. Um, and he wanted to try to sing, play, and jam with me at the same time. Uh, this was for the Acoustic Believe record. Um, uh, let's see. Um, and so, um, so we were trying to do one of the songs, and he was trying to sing and play. But it was really hard to capture vocals and guitar at the same time. And really, I was trying just not to make a mistake and throw them off, because if we captured a good take of his guitar and his vocal, then I would just replace mine after he left or something. So, and he did, but that was the, this is the day, like just shortly after this, we wrote uh, yellow raincoat together. So I was jamming on that and he goes, Hey Tom, what's that? Can I write to it? And I said, ah, I don't know, Justin. Uh, I don't know if it'll go anywhere. So, all right. So I'm going to remove that now. Um, anyway. So yeah, Starla. Um, uh, so yeah, the, the, uh, so you're leading, 
deeply worship, sometimes I find that, uh, yeah, and that's a hard thing to teach. You know, um, one of the things that I would do, and because I'm a guitar player first, because I led worship too for years and years and years, um, and I, I did clinics for Maranatha Music back in the 90s. Thank you. Uh, uh, um, yeah, and oh, let me uh, let me drop in. I think I have it right here. Hold on a second. Desktop. Boop. Uh, wait, what? Yeah, there we go. YouTube stuff. YouTube live streams. Uh, live stream lesson list. So um, I've got it right. Bruce, did you put the actual lesson numbers in there? So I did um, Storming and Grooving was lesson, um, I talked about in lesson 53 to 64. I think there's some really good tips there. Also, you if you just look for my, I have a playlist, uh, Storming and Grooving too. Um, and then the finger picking one was 30 through 42. Uh, so if you go to my, if you just go to my live stream tab and then you just have to go back a couple pages, you should be able to feel it. Because I'm doing a live stream every, you know, every other day or so. So the, it's just the list keeps getting longer. I mean, this is 152 since COVID started. Chuck Smith. Oh, I, I remember Chuck Smith. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Maranatha Music. Um, uh, um, yeah, Maranatha. I, I did. Maranatha was a, became a, a record company, a publishing company, and I did clinics for them back in the 90s. Uh, Gary's here. Gary. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's a bummer. You have to be virtual for that, but that's cool that you're still able to do it with, you know, uh, yeah, I gotta go. Yeah. I gotta go to Yosemite. Ugh, so many things to do. I want to get to Europe again soon. I want to go to Scotland, David. I want to come and see you hang out get a beer. Get an ale, a, a big dark ale that I can't stand up without getting dizzy afterwards. It's the best kind. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, uh, what else was I going to enter here? Oh, oh yeah, I have playlists that uh, deal with... Um, let's see, Tam. <clears throat> so on my YouTube channel, if you click on my channel and go to playlists, uh, you'll see all different playlists, and I think I put them in order. Basics are the top one, but I also have, let's see, the basics, uh, the beginning of music, exercises for guitars. Oh, oh, I can, yeah, let's see. Scales and modes, strumming and grooving lessons. And see, it won't let me, it won't let me, I hate that, it won't let me, it doesn't create a link for me to give you here. Wait, nice. Oh, here. Here's a link. Okay, so now I've got a link. So this is the strumming and grooving lessons. I should create a, Bruce, I should create a page with all these just I can go to and save. But okay, so there's a playlist for strumming and grooving. Oh, shoot, you can't see those. That's right. Okay, I'm going to pin this. So now you should be able to see it. it's going to be up there pinned. So that's the strumming and grooving lessons. So if you need to work on your strumming and grooves, a, I, what does it say? Now, some, keep in mind, some of these are for electric. Uh, but this says there's 35 videos and some of them go way back. Um, and some of them are songs that I wrote and things like that, where I talk about the groove. So I'm actually, it's, these are all generally, oh, and there's some of the live streams up there too. So you could even go to those and, uh, and get some of that. And then you asked about finger picking. Do I have a finger picking? I don't know if I have a finger picking playlist. I have, I, for, I can't remember. See, I'm seeing all my, oh, I do have finger picking lessons. Look at, duh, of course I do. And what did I do there? See, daily, oh, well, there's a, it's all the daily lessons are kind of all there. And then there's also the Giuliani studies and things like that. And then Travis picking. Okay, so this, here's, oh, dang it. So, um, I don't know if you're on the Discord. <laughs> we can't post links, it's so frustrating. So grab that link really quick because I'm gonna put I'm gonna put it up there again, Starla. So the, grab grab that link up there because I'm gonna put a new link up and I can't figure out why. The only option I have here is replace pin or remove. I don't have any other options here. Um, oh, that's awesome. 
Yeah, I, I, I like. I mean, I like hiking, but I like street. I like walking in city streets, you know, and and because for me, there's a lot to look at, and if I get hungry or thirsty, I can stop. But I also like hiking. But I have to remember to take water with me or something because I never. I just usually like I got my phone and my wallet. And I'm good, you know. <laughs> Sitting that's all I need. Okay, so hopefully you grab that link up there for the strumming playlist. And now I'm going to pin this one. I'm going to replace that pin with this pin. Okay, got it. Okay, good. That, okay, that's good enough. So now you've got up there. Oh, Dan Garcia. Oh no, Dan Gatton. Sorry. Um, uh, so now that one is the finger picking. But mostly what that is is links to the. Most of the videos up there are links uh, to the um, uh, live stream that we did earlier this year on finger picking. And so you can watch this kind of flow or you can watch specific lessons about Giuliani's arpeggios, which are great. They're a classical thing. You, you learn if you study classical guitar, they're um, basically two chord arpeggios. You, it's like... Okay. And those are... Um, uh, those are um, uh, great for building up finger independence on your right hand and develop, you know, kind of mindless ability to kind of do patterns and talk at the same time. Which in worship, I found that a lot of times I would uh, be talking and do, and Paul Balash is a friend of mine, he kind of, he would do this thing where he would just keep doing this descending progression while he talked and it was always very sweet. Right, and he would have this sound that was like, oh, and he'd be talking and he'd be sharing, maybe reading a Bible verse or something like that. I need to hit up Paul, it's been a long time since we spoke. Um, but that's kind of a fun little thing to do to practice. And I'm not doing a pattern, you'll notice on my right hand, I'm kind of arpeggiating through the chords. But doing like a James Taylor kind of approach is really what I would say. Maybe some pause. Some licks in there. And know that you can, that you can, you know, tear at the heartstrings. I play that C chord instead of instead of the A chord and it just was like what? Because it's out of key and it creates this mood, right? And it's like whoa. You know, music's very powerful, it's very manipulative, and that's the goal is to manipulate people as much as possible. <laughs> Right, but you can. But the other thing you can do is the is this the chord progression kind of noodle with the chord progression um, of the song that you're playing in, whatever that is. Yeah, and home position is definitely top three strings. To the top of the index getting the third string, second finger getting the. Um, second string and the third finger getting the first string like that so you have those and you know all your melodies you... i wrote a song called in the arms of jesus a long time ago based on a um, based on a grave marker i saw you know and so i wrote this song and uh, basically about being safe and sound and, you know, that kind of thing. And I got asked to do it at a bunch of kids' baby funerals. I'm like, oh, it's the worst if you play singing a song at a funeral for a, like a, a two-month-old or something. It was like, yeah. So the song got kind of known in a certain circles. And so uh, that was that was the worst. Um, oh, you're tuck, you're lurkered out. You're lurkered out. <laughs> Lurker out. Okay, you take it off, Paul. Good to see you. Um yeah, it was uh, reminding me of a Fernando. Um, gosh darn it, what's, the, what's her name? I always forget the, that girl's name that's the bluegrass singer that I always mention. Like, I love her. Uh, 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 shoot, what? Somebody's, I, I know Bruce knows it. Um, oh, Bruce, oh, wait, what? Did I do, did I not do something? 
uh, he didn't, Bruce, wait, what? Um, it has to be like riding a bike. Auto yeah, yeah, it's totally, yeah, Joseph, exactly. To be able to talk and to kind of noodle like that, it's a great skill to have in it. I don't remember ever practicing it, okay? Um, but it came after I could sing and play at the same time. And that I did have to practice like crazy. First, I had to practice guitar. Then I had to practice singing. And then I had to practice singing with guitar. I remember when I very first started singing, other than just like singing in my car or singing in the shower or singing in the bedroom or whatever as a kid, I remember when I first started singing, it was with my band and I we were recording. We had a four-track recorder. We were recording tracks, kind of demos of songs. I don't know where those tapes are. That was, I, well, no, I do know, actually. I, I, I may have some of those somewhere. Um, and I wanted to do background vocals. I wanted to hear background vocals, so I had to do them myself. And I went into the studio by myself and did them. You know, so I'm sitting there with a tape deck and the headphones and the microphone and working out uh, singing. So that I kind of worked out. And then once I got that down, like once I got to the point where I could sing harmonies and parts um, on tape, then I then I was able to do them in the band. So when the band did shows, I was able to sing backgrounds for the lead singer because I wasn't the lead singer in the band. Um, and then uh, Molly Tuttle. It wasn't Molly Tuttle, no. No, older. Uh, I say nothing at all. When you say nothing at all, who's that girl? Yes. Yeah, I, uh, Joseph, I have a really good series of uh, videos that I could post right now. And I, I haven't seen that, uh, but I bet it is amazing. Tommy's great. I've seen Tommy a couple times live. Um, he's off. Uh, let's see. And think <laughs> regarding soloing and thinking of tools. Okay, hold on a second. Where did Jeff, what's your question? Let me get up there. Uh, so, hmm, how far up was it? Yeah, see the links are not, oh, uh, let's see. Okay, Jeff, 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 Jeff. Soften the ears before sticking the wires. Oh, oh, he didn't, Bruce. That's what you were saying when he said he didn't, Bruce. Okay, so there must have been a question up here that I, did Tom answer your question? Jeff, you said that when you're soloing over a progression, you're thinking of many tools. Can you brief, br briefly mention what some of those other tools might be? Yeah. Okay, sorry. That's a great, yeah, Alison Krauss. Thank you, Denise. Okay, so two things. Uh, we'll talk about the tools and, and I, the Alison Krauss story. So um, my friend Fernando Ortega, who's a dear friend and who I played way back in the day with, uh, worship stuff. I mean, I've known, I knew him before I knew Beth. Um, and um, in fact, he was kind of instrumental, not instrumental, but he kind of encouraged me to ask Beth out. And I accidentally asked her out right in front of her boyfriend, <laughs> not knowing that that was her boyfriend. But anyway, she totally clearly went out with me. So she didn't really like the guy she was hanging out with. So she was glad that I asked her. But, um, but Fernando did a record and, uh, you know, he's got a singing artist. He's an artist. You can look him up. His name is Fernando Ortega. He's got a beautiful voice. He's a great piano player, too. Uh, Fernando Ortega. And he's not Mexican. And I'm not, he, and that's not, don't take that wrong. <laughs> but the story is funny because he's not Mexican. He's born in, he was born in Albuquerque. His family is, I think, from Ecuador. His dad was uh, an like his dad was an ambassador from the U.S. to Ecuador. I don't Ecuador U.S. something. I mean, his dad was a big deal. His, his brother-in-law was a Secret Service agent. I mean, he's, he's like he's an entrenched American, but his he came from kind of the upper class of his family came from kind of the upper class of South America. Uh, very European descent kind of aspect to their family, uh, so. <laughs> He, he does a record with Alison Krauss, like a bluegrass thing uh, for his record. So he does a song on her record or on his, she sings on one of his songs on his record. He gets nominated for a Dove Award for best bluegrass song of the year and wins. <laughs> and he's a piano player, right? 
And he gets up to accept the award and he says, boy, it's crazy times we're living in. When And I saw this live. I was watching this live. He said, boy, you know, it's crazy times when a, when a piano playing Mexican wins a bluegrass song of the year award. <laughs> Of course, it's funny because he's not a Mexican. You know, it was just funny because he was like playing on everybody's stereotypes there in Nashville or whatever. But that was pretty funny. Okay, so now the tool thing. Okay, my 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 point that I make when I said about the tool is that it's difficult for me when I'm showing you these scales, like in this case the blue, the major blue scales, and I'm jamming along with the um, jam track. It's hard because. What what I'm telling my brain and my hands to do is to only use one tool, which is these G major, which isn't too hard because it's there's a lot of notes represented there, so I have access to a lot of notes, but I'm still trying to stick to the G major blues over the C, G chord, C major blues over the C chord, D major blues over the D chord. Okay, so I'm trying to stick to those, and they're very very bluegrassy scales, so it's not impossible. But I, I, you know, there are times when I want to go to, I want to go to major scale, like a G major school, which is a different tool. Okay. And those, uh, that was here. That was the first week. So we did that the first week, the G major scale. Then the second week we did the G minor blues. So these are tools. Here's one tool. Here's another tool. And here's another tool. And so when you're working on an engine, a car engine, you go, oh, okay, I need this tool for this job and then okay now I got to, to remove to get to that I got to take this out and I get this tool for that now I need the big giant wrench for this or whatever same thing when you're doing plumbing work or whatever um, when you're making a, a cigar box guitar which apparently takes years to make a cigar box guitar <laughs> somebody knows who I'm talking to <laughs> By the way, you can go to the Discord to see how Bruce is doing on my cigar box guitar. I'm not complaining because he's giving it to me. So I'm like, okay, well, this is way too generous on his part. But 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 another tool would be the minor, you know, pentatonic, which sounds really good over the bluegrass thing, right? Um, and so, and then the minor blues or G mixolydian. So I want to mix them all up. So I want to use all the tools in the toolbox. I don't want to just use one tool. So, but when I'm trying to model that tool for you, then what I'm doing is I'm playing along with the jam track, which is where here, and this is a 75. So I've slowed it down. whatever I want to do when I'm soloing. I don't want to have any rules when I'm soloing. Um, so, but when I say, I talk about only using one tool, it's just because I'm doing it for your benefit, to show you, to model that scale um, so that you can, um, uh, so that you can see its use. That's, that's what I'm talking about. So yeah, you definitely want to have, you're getting tools. Right now you've got, if you go back in these lessons, you go back two weeks, you got the G major scale, you got the G, major pen, the C major pen, the D major pen, and now we have the G major blues, C major blues and 
D major blues. You have all of those in um, in one. Hey, channel. Um, and so we're just about done. I got my breakfast that's probably right around 55 degrees now. It's so cold. I'm going to have to eat it up. Um, yeah, great. Brother, where are That was a great score and a great movie. And I love the Coen brothers. Uh, really, you know, No Country for Old Men. Such a great, you know, gra creepy movie. Oh, man. And Fargo, the same thing. Both those movies make me feel very uneasy, but they're really good at that. And then the comedies, which is like, no, oh, brother, uh, those are also good. Um, one of my favorites is uh, Raising Arizona, which is one of their, one of their first movies. It's I, I really like it. It's one of my. It's really one of the few Nicolas Cage movies I really like. I mean, I think I like the the with the one the you know the shoot the National Treasure the first one was kind of fun. It's always a good watch when you're just like bored and you want to fill some time and you want to get be entertained. It's not a bad one. Yeah, cigar box guitar. The way my cigar the cigar box guitar is going to be three strings that can be tuned. More like a, a, a uh, it's probably going to be tuned more like a dulcimer. It's going to be like DG or DAD, I think, right, Bruce? Or however I want to tune it, I suppose. Um. <laughs> so. oh, oh, wait, I'm sorry, Bruce, did you reply to my, my criticism? Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Hand tools only. Yeah, no planer, joiner, sorry, no 30. Yeah, yeah. No, I get it. I get it, Bruce. And if I were paying you for it, of course, I wouldn't pay you $30,000. But if I paid you for it, you would at least have a down payment on one of those tools. So um, so hopefully that answers your question. Was that Jeff? I think, yeah, Jeff. Um, and I'm going to have my breakfast now, so I'm not going to eat in front of you. But I will uh, – so um, – you know what? Yeah, that's right. Cage was, he plays kind of the same person. You're right. He, he was very good. He was very good in Moonstruck. Um, uh, he kind of plays the same person in some ways. Same with Tom Cruise. He just <laughs> plays the same guy. But there's not a lot of range, I don't feel like, with some actors. Um, uh, but it doesn't seem to affect their bottom line, I guess. Big Lebowski is a very good, yeah. That's a very good Coen Brother film. Um there are others I've watched. Uh, Pee Wee at our church was in uh, Lady Killers. He played bass. He was playing bass in the gospel church when they went to gospel church. He was playing in the band. He was in the band. In fact, I probably know every musician in that band and probably half the choir too. Uh, but Pee Wee got to play in that. That's cool. So he, you know, the cool thing about that when you work on those movies is you get paid for the rest of your life on those. Um, you know, maybe a dollar a year or something, but it, it, you get you get something. Okay, a CNC machine costs a hundred grand. That's pretty crazy, Bruce. Yeah, I don't see that that is justifiable. <laughs> so, um, what else? Let's see. Da, 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 da. Liam Neeson plays Liam Neeson. Exactly. Yes, Liam Neeson. That's another one. He's like, he plays Liam Neeson. You're right. Yep. Now, Clo uh, Clooney. Yes, damn weird a type spot. Clooney is very broad. He's a very good actor. Um, I, I I think he's a, an excellent actor. Um, yep, yeah, David Sillers agrees with Sam. Yeah, Leblonsky is big. Lebon, uh, Lebonsky, Lebonsky is is definitely. And they would, if you notice, if you look at their IMDb page, they would pretty much alternate between a pseudo comedy and a pseudo pseudo drama thriller um you know like big lebowski was followed up by probably either before or after was fargo so i mean they were batting a thousand there for a while um uh and then uh blood simple i think was their first one right isn't that their first one which i never saw yeah there are actors and then their movie stars exactly andrew you're 100 percent right we're totally off the guitar subject now. Take care, Mr. Straley. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Mr. W. Go walk the dogs. See you Wednesday. Yep. Hopefully, Lord willing. Ale Elena, I'm completely new to guitar. Oh, my gosh. Oh, no. Elena and Celine, no worries. Um, I, I, You know, I, I'm still toying with the idea. I started working on... Um, 
creating a what's called a um, style guide for uh, doing a, a, a series of lessons called super duper basic guitar. <laughs> you know, like literally here's an e, you know, boom, you know. Uh, and so I'm work. I'm thinking about doing that. And probably what I'll do is I'll shoot 10 lessons at once and then um, release them one a week. They'll eventually all be up there. But if I release like 20 lessons at once, once I lose a lot of subscribers. Anytime I upload or release a bunch of lessons at once, I, I lose subscribers uh, because they get too many notifications. They're like, I don't need to follow this. Um, uh, let me check, see if... Well, Uh, sorry, a little bit of business. Uh, so, um, oh, that's funny. We're in a tight spot with a ringtone on my phone. Okay. I have, let me see if I can play my ringtone. I think I can. Um, I remember where it is. Where do they put that? It's so phone incoming calls uh, ringtone. oh you know what I think I can just use the search function yeah now I may have to delete this aspect of it Okay, so do you know what that's from? It, bonus points if anyone knows what that is from. What it, uh, I'll narrow it down. It's from a TV show. <laughs> and as soon as I watched this series, I said, oh, my gosh. I Because uh, my friend T, uh, CJ hit me to the show. I'd never watched it. And he hit me to it. And um, I said, oh, as soon as I saw, like, the first couple episodes, I said, oh, I was on the hunt for that ringtone. And I found it and I put it on my phone. So I don't know if you, uh, it's just, so that, it's funny because my phone doesn't ring very often because I have it set on stun, but occasionally it does. And it just makes me laugh. It sounds like a Herb Alpert song, but it's not a Herb Alpert song, but it's from a TV show. I don't know what, uh, um, it was just, it was just something that they found. It's not the dating game. Oh, okay. So Holly, if you know it. If you recognize that, then you know the show. You just don't remember what it's called. It is the funniest show. Uh, it's very inappropriate, but it's a very funny show. Not the Love Boat. No, much more current than that. Do I have a three-string guitar box I can play? No, uh, but Dan Daniel, hold on a second. I'm leaving the room so everybody, everybody take a sip. I do have something that kind of is similar. So this is, I think, called a strum stick, and what this is is a, uh, it's kind of a horizontal or, you know, handheld, uh, upright um, a dulcimer. A dulcimer is played like this. You'll notice the frets are not every half step. So Holly, oh God, Holly totally knows the, knows the show because you wouldn't, you wouldn't know that unless you watch the show. It's not, it's not a pre-existing song per se that I'd ever heard of before. And this is totally not in tune, so I'm going to have to get my tuner out here. Uh, but this is basically, uh, the Scarbox guitar would be tuned in like a, a like a power chord. Okay, so I'm going to tune this to D and C. But unfortunately, this can only do major scale, because it's, it's tuned like a, a dulcimer.
it's kind of cute, but it's it's very limited in its uh, in its ability to be playing anything. Like I can't do blues on it, and the strings are really low, so I couldn't even do slide on it. And the, sonically, it's just really small sounding. The idea is to basically it was really overpriced too. I mean, it was made in Canada, Seagull. I think I paid 150 bucks for it, but I mean, it's just like I, it wasn't as good a quality as I thought I would have thought. Um, and so sonically, it's just. It's kind of cool. All right, so uh, Holly is, um, yeah. I mean, it's cool. It's it's fine. It's it's just I've I've not I've yet to use it on anything. It was one of those instruments I picked up. In fact, I got to get something before the end. I got to spend some money before the end of the year. I need more write-offs. Um, but uh, I wish I could get a hurdy gurdy before the end of the year. I, it's hard to find used ones anywhere, uh, so I have to have one made. They're usually made to order. No, Valerie Bertinelli was not in that TV show. Um, okay, so Holly, I'm gonna play that it, play it again, so you can hear it, and you're gonna be like, "Dang it, what is that?" <laughs> Close your eyes, Holly, and whose face comes to mind? Oh, let me get this. <laughs> That's my ringtone, though. And that show is hilarious. Let's see. Is that, has somebody said it? Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Uh, no, Culver Culver is uh, uh, the mil... Gosh, what am I... Here, I got something on my shoulder. Snot or something. Uh, That's a military school in Indiana, in Culver, Indiana, on Lake Max and Cucky. So if that's what you're... Uh, there's a burger shop. There's a couple of them there. But I used to go there on weekends when I was a kid or in high school, college, uh, with friends and stuff like that. So I just got a soft spot in my heart. The kids have been there. The kids have stayed there. Um, would love to at some point rent a house there in the summer and, and for a week. That would be really fun. It's not Three's Company. It's much more recent than that. No, it's not going to bug you because I'm going to – I'm going <laughs> to – okay. All right. Nobody has guessed it. And I guess that's – it's – I mean, the show was five seasons, all right? But it wasn't on network. It was on Showtime, okay? So that narrows it down big time. Uh, five seasons, maybe six, I think five seasons, Showtime. Uh, the star of the show, whose ringtone that is, is one of the stars on one of the biggest shows in television sitcom history of the last 30, 40 years. Yes, Jeff Height, bingo. What's the name of the show? Do you know the name of the show? You can look it up now on IMDb. The show is called Episodes, and it is the funniest show. It One, one of my favorite genres is fish out of water. So I love like time travel stuff when people go back in time and they don't know how to interact like outlander, uh, you know, uh, back to the future, things like that. Or someone who's just in a, a scenario a situation where they really, I love like, uh, uh, the lost in translation I thought was a brilliant movie, uh, by Sophia, um, Coppola, uh, with Bill Murray because they didn't translate the Japanese for us. So like, 80% of the movie is Japanese and Sophia puts us in the exact same place that Bill Murray is in by not understanding anything going on. And that to me is a mark of a phenomenal movie and director where they're, where you really do inhabit the lead character. To me, that's a, um, uh, uh, oh, I got to answer a text. Hold a second. Um, so, um, yeah, I'm not hearing back from Walters. For some um, let's see. Merry Christmas. Oh, and, and Indy Fishers, you know, I'm from Indianapolis, right? I, I went to North Central High School. I'm looking for a nail file. My nails are jacked up right now. Um, yeah, so... Oh, yeah. No, Holly, it's hilarious. Matt LeBlanc is so good in that show. But basically, the fish out of water aspect of it, the, the first episode is 
this this married couple, this British couple, they have have written this show that wins awards, a sitcom in Britain, a highbrow sitcom about a boys' school and a headmaster at a boys' school. And um, <laughs> and they're in Britain, and they just win awards for it again. And this producer from America comes, I think he's NBC or something, and he comes to see them at this thing and ask them to bring the show to America. And they're like, I don't know. And he's like, you know, he talks them into it. And they can't believe it because it's like America is 10 times the, the audience of Britain. And so um, so they come and it, the, one of the fascinating things about this, Holly, though, the first the entire first season was filmed in London, not in L.A. And yet the entire show takes place in L.A. You'd swear they're in L.A. Now, there's some they do some establishing shots that are in L.A., but there's even a scene where they're at a Malibu house that's actually in London. Um, but they're looking out on the ocean and it's a blue screen or a green screen. And um, so, yeah, if you haven't seen, well, now you can see episodes is on Netflix. So it's, it's, it's done. It's resolved. Um, you can sit down and binge watch it. Trust me, you probably will. I think each episode is about 30 minutes. Um, and for me, it was, it's just really funny and it's very, oh my God, that's so LA. <laughs> <laughs> the, the the backstabbing and the lying and the everything is just so LA. And then of course there's, you know, but Matt is so good at being like a selfish, you know, guy, but there's some touching moments in it too. It's, it's actually a really, like I said, it's a really good show. Um, I think you'll, um, Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, Balalaika's, I've got, I just got a Balalaika, I'm not like a monster on it by any stretch. Um, so, yeah, you know, LA, Pucks, yeah, that's right, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, don't give away too much, but I think that actually is first episode, is the very, very first episode of episodes is Pucks. Uh, and it, it wraps up really nice, but uh, yeah, you can totally watch it um, on Netflix now. Um, I think it's still up on Netflix, so... Yeah, it's, it's definitely something if you're looking for something to watch. You may hate it. I don't know. But, I you know, and it came with a good recommendation from a friend who's pretty pretty particular about shows. He's And I'm a, here's the thing. My favorite television genre is the sitcom. I just love that genre. I love the medium. I've actually tried to write um, a sitcom, and it's unbelievably difficult. It's really hard. That's why they have a team of writers. Uh, for these shows. I mean, they'll have 20 people in a room sometimes to write these shows. Um, and you know, they'll have somebody kind of come up with the script idea and then they just, the, the jokes and the bits and everything like that in the play. And you need, you got, you got to have people with memory like, well, they, you know, they, his dad died, remember? Of course, with Frasier, they screwed that all up. But like Cheers is my favorite sitcom of all time. Um, and then, you know, I really liked, uh, I loved MASH for a long time, but it didn't wear well. For some reason, like watching it in reruns now, like so many years later, it's, it's not as funny. It's it's weird. Cheers to me still makes me laugh. Um, and it's all about the character and playing on the character. So, uh, you know, I really liked uh, Dick Van Dyke show was a great one. Um, Friends. And that was the show that, that Matt LeBlanc came from. Friends is great. Seinfeld, I think, is really good. They really had it down. Um, uh, so... Uh, anyway, am I self-taught? Uh, no, uh, no, I took lessons as a kid from the age of nine till about the age of 17. And then I started teaching at the store that I was taking lessons at. Um, I'm a perpetual student though. I'm always learning even now. Um, and, um, uh, I also studied in college. So I went to music school for one year and took classical guitar lessons with a private teacher for a year. And then I uh, continued that for another year, even though I quit school, I kept taking lessons from him. Um, and then um, I did take some lessons in LA from like uh, Carl Verheyen, who's a, a guitar player here in town. Um, but for the most part, I'm, other than that, I'm self. Oh, thank you, Destiny. I've, I've touched the guitar now. I've not touched the guitar in over 30 years, but until three days ago, I'm learning more from you in three days than I knew before. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> in between all the, all the squirrel. 
Oh, all my distractions. You're still learning. I can't believe that. That's hard to, I can't even imagine. I would never watch me. <laughs> Just saying, I wouldn't have the patience to watch me. But we've developed a community here that will not leave you alone. So once you've joined this community, you're screwed. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Oh, Queen's Gambit was great. That was very, very good. I, I was, uh, I was very, I was very impressed with that. And I was very impressed that it didn't go to, you know, I feel like what was the one on Netflix? I haven't watched. I'm not going to watch it. Something like Little Liars or Pretty or Little Secrets or I don't know. Even everybody's complaining there's way too much sex in it that has nothing to do with the plot. And that's my complaint most of the time. It's like, it's it's really creepy directors that make actors do this stuff because I I think you would be hard pressed other than say nine and a half weeks or something to find it and that movie should never have been made anyway that was just a, an entire creep fest by a director but I can't I can't think of a sex scene that has ever really propelled a story forward you know they they I would get it if they just showed a train going through a tunnel right. That was what they did in the old days, right? They just like fireworks would go off and, you know, a train would come through a tunnel and that was all you needed to know. Okay, we get it. They had sex. We don't need to see it. And so it cracked me up when they had this this drama. Um, you Game of Thrones, yeah. That it's Yeah, I haven't watched Game of Thrones, but we watched another one. Outlander was just like that. Every time they were trying to be Game of Thrones, I think Outlander was also Showtime and it was Showtime's version of HBO's Game of Thrones. And we're, we're, we're watching this and just going, why are they having sex again? <laughs> it's just like this. This is not I, I don't get it. And if they're trying to be romantic and attract women and it's like it's a great love story, though. And it's like, yeah, but I don't think really women want to see that. They'd rather see him doing the dishes or folding the laundry. You know, that's like if I if I want to turn on my wife, that's what I do. <laughs> Just so you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly, Jeff. The sex scenes amounts to good characters getting coffee. Uh, but this one show that was like geared towards young people and stuff, and it's, it's the actors, of course, are all over 18. They're probably in their mid 20s, but they're all playing teenagers in high school and they're having sex all the time. And so the implication is you're watching underage people have sex and you're like, this Netflix is like, what else is new for Netflix, right? And it's like, Nobody wants to see that. I, I don't understand. That. But the, the directors and the writers and the producers and the creators, they just, they're really into this. And they think, you know, I remember watching another good series, particularly the first season of Jessica Jones was really good. The first episode, I watched it. I watched the whole series, the first series season. And because um, I just watched it by myself because I didn't think it was anything Beth would like. But by the end of it, I was like, oh, I think this is really cool. I think Beth would like it. And I kept talking about it. She's like, well, we got to watch this. I said, yeah, but the first episode's got a lot of sex in it. And I said, but it, once it gets past that, the show was much better because they stopped doing that. And it was like they were trying to hook you, I think. And so I think there's a certain – and I know I'm guilty of it, but there's a certain – you know, when you're flipping – guys flip channels because they're just looking for girls in bikinis. <laughs> and then they'll stop. Um, so, you know, there's a certain segment of the population that that, that – gets hooked in by things like that. Um, but, you know, I don't really fall for that anymore. Now it just it seems annoying. Um, and so, yeah, yeah, Denise, yeah, it kind of, you know, it'd be interesting to see if someone could do an edit of and cut out all the unnecessary sex scenes and maybe some of the gore from uh, from Game of Thrones. The You know what gets me more than gore? The torture stuff. Torture is the worst. Seeing somebody tortured is is just like, ugh, why? I don't want to watch that, you know. And that and, and in that scenario, oftentimes that will propel a story forward, right? There's a lot of great stories that have, you know, that are all about that. Um, you know, uh, I'm trying to think of the one about the the Christian, uh, the guy that became a Christian ended up forgiving the Japanese, but they tortured the crud out of him. Um, so, and he ended up going on becoming an Olympic athlete. Uh, Santorini, Sant. What was his name? Um, he's an amazing man. I mean, gosh, what a great story he has. Um, in fact, I think it was the last book my mom ever read uh, before she lost her eyesight. Um, so, let's see. Uh, 
Oh, interesting. Holly, is that you're talking about? Uh, yeah, you're talking about Game of Thrones. See, I've not seen Game of Thrones because I don't have HBO. Um, I'm working on an HBO. I think it's HBO Max. Uh, I'm working on Tom and Jerry right now. I'm doing some guitars on that. Um, so interesting. To be fair, filmmakers. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's just I, I just the torture thing is just like. Uh, you know, I, I mean, I think about the first, uh, the, the Casino Royale day, James Bond, where he's sitting naked in the chair and the guy's taking that thing and hitting him right in the, you know, that actually was almost funny because of, of uh, what's his name, uh, Daniel Craig's reaction to him. It was like, you know, oh, I got a tickle down there. Would you mind tickling it again? It's like, oh my gosh. It was like, we just watched that the other day for the first time in years. And it was like, oh, I forgot about that scene. I was like, oh. As a guy, it's just like, oh, I don't need to see this. Two and a Half Men, you know what? That's one show. I'll tell you another show that really cracks me up that I didn't watch when it was airing, and that is Everybody Loves Raymond. Um, I watched, started, started watching that show, and I realized, right? You know, and when you write, when your script, I've written a lot of scripts. In fact, I'm working on a book now, a novel, based on a script that I wrote. So I'm, I'm turning a script that I wrote into a novel to see if it can get adapted, just for fun. Um, and so, uh, and I really can't give the story away, unfortunately, but it's a really cool story, a very unique story. I've never heard of anything like it. Um, oh, Louis Zamperini. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, Zamperini. That's right. He's such a, an amazing man. I mean, you read his story, his life story. It's like, what was the name of his life story? It was the name of the book, too. Oh, yeah, Mandalorian is good. Uh, yeah. Uh. Yeah, exactly. That's right. The bar girls. You never see. That's right. That's right, Joseph. You always, you always knew that there was. It was a, it was a uh, chicken ranch, but you never, you never saw the the chickens ranching. <laughs> um, Breaking Bad was very good too, and and I I, I can't wait for because I've been watching the prequel, which is. Uh, uh, better Call Saul, which is almost better uh, in some ways because it's not quite as brutal. Uh, it's just more like, oh, that guy that <laughs> just can't win. That poor guy, you know, it's that kind of thing. Um, but I'm waiting for it to be finished so that I can just watch it in one sitting. Not one sitting, but, you know, I can binge it. Um, uh, yes. Right, that guy, yeah, Louis Louis Zamperini was, yeah, and he, he almost starved to death on the right. He almost he died a plane crash, and then he got captured. It was like, oh my gosh, that live, and then he lived to be ninety or something. It's like you, um, he had like ten ten lives. Um, but what was I talking about? That we were. Oh yeah, the Star Wars. And here's the thing, Disney, my Disney stock is going crazy uh, because they announced that, well, for one thing, they had all these subscribers. Also, they announced that they're, they've got like 150 shows that they're working on. And I think they're doing 10 different Star Wars series. And what was the other one that they're doing? Like, but 10 different series. Like Mandalorian is one series, not, not 10 episodes. They're going to start 10 new series like The Mandalorian. So they'll have Han Solo series that's like young Han Solo going through all that. I mean, it's they are going to be a freaking machine. And all the damage on the stock market that has been done to them because they can't open their parks, especially California Adventure and, and Disneyland, um, it's, it seems to be irrelevant because they're just going crazy. And the thing about the Star Wars stuff is so much of it is CG that everybody can work from home so they can keep creating content. Uh, John Favreau was Favreau was he on episodes? I don't think so. I don't remember that John Favreau was ever in an episode of episodes. Uh, but he he was on an episode of Friends. He was the billionaire that dated um, uh, Courtney Cox, who I know by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Not like like friends with Courtney Cox. I actually just I know her sister Dottie who looks just like her. And so 
uh, Dottie. I played guitar at Dottie's wedding way back in the day, and Courtney was there when she was dating Michael Keaton. So Michael Keaton, they came to the rehearsal, but they didn't come to the wedding. Uh, and it was before Friends. This is pre-Friends. So she was fairly well known because she had been on. Uh, she was in um, a regular on Family Ties uh, with uh, Michael J. Fox. Uh, she was Michael J. Fox's love interest, but she was dating Michael Keaton at the time. And so Michael Keaton was big because of Batman. So they came to the rehearsal, but didn't come to the wedding, which was interesting. Um, but anyway, I met her then. And then I think at a family thing once or something, she came to a couple shows I did or something. Um, it's just funny because the kids are all friends with Dottie's kids. And they're all, you know, it's Aunt Courtney to them. <laughs> you know, it's like... Aunt Courtney and they, she lives in Malibu and yeah, just just another person. So many squirrels. Oh my gosh, I know, right? Entourage. Yes, he probably made appearances on Entourage. I, that was a show I started to watch a little bit. Again, it was another one that I didn't have the cable for. Um, I need to watch that one. It's pretty good. It's it's a little bit. It's a little annoying. Entourage was for me. Um, yeah, I'm helping you avoid chores. I I know, right? Um, well, if your husband wants to turn you on, then he can do the chores. <laughs> so he, uh, uh, yeah, I'm trying to catch up on anything I missed here. Um, all right, so I'm going to sign off. It's been way too long. Oh, man, it's been, oh, my gosh, I'm at two and a half hours. Holy cow. And everybody's leaving. Okay, so I will talk to you later. Um, I'll see you on Wednesday. I will hopefully have a song done by then and charted and I got to do a lot of work. So, uh, I better get to it. Um, thanks for the tips. Uh, I got some, I got some, I got some love from Holly and from who else gave me love? Uh, where are you? Oh man. Surely. Uh, what? it's the, the chat's so long now. I can't even find it. So, um, anyway, I will, um, and there's the discord link down there. You're going to have to copy it right now. They're not letting us post links for some reason. And I'll try to figure that out in the next week or so. Uh, Dennis, we maybe talk, bring this, uh, conversation to, um, to the discord too, if we want to talk about it there. Okay. All right, uh, guys, I'll talk to you later. Thank you so much. Stay safe. Uh, those of you in England, I'm sorry, you got another strain and nobody's letting you come. Now that's why I can't go to London. Now I was supposed to go to London next week, but, uh, that's not going to happen. So. Um, and, uh, you're welcome, Michael destiny. You're well, you're very welcome. You just showed up. So I, 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 you, you're a beginner. Um, uh, maybe go to the discord and see if there's, um, uh, they, you know, there's, there's definitely a lot of stuff there and, and we, they can talk about where to start too. Okay. Anyway, God bless you all. Talk to you soon.